done by Senator Chiriot in that regard uh, as historic. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there was one time I was in a delegation that went to Mumias, and in that delegation we had a member of parliament from Transoya, and you know Transoya is all about maize, uh, and if you go to Mumias, it's all about sugar. Uh, so all these crops are very important depending on the areas where you come from. And definitely, uh, I hope that uh, we are going to take up on the footsteps of Senator Cheriot and correct the other vagaries that are confronting the other crops, uh, particularly the ones that I've, I have mentioned. But on that trip, I remember a member of parliament, uh, quite out of uh, kindness of heart, was telling people in Mumias that uh, farmers should get higher prices for maize. But of course in Mumias, if you talk about uh, increasing the prices of maize, that would mean they would pay more for maize or maize flour. Uh, and they're not quite happy with that one. So sometimes these messages, depending on where you are, they can be quite uh, mixed. I, Mr. Speaker, I think the primary person to support is the farmer. The primary, and I want to repeat this, because this, we got a many players in the tea industry, but we have to protect the farmer. And uh, in the many times I've gone to Central Province uh, and Mount Kenya area and in Kericho, Limuru, and other areas, the plight of the farmers has always been the primary concern because in the legacy and the structures we had before, it would appear that farmers were just beasts of burden. You produce a crop, you get little for it, but other brokers and middlemen make, make a lot of money out of it. And I think for all of us, in looking at this bill, I pray to you, think of the farmer first. Because if you think of anybody else, imagine there was no tea to sell in Kenya. Imagine if farmers get frustrated, they started uprooting their tea. Would you be talking about auctioneers, or about brokers, or about packers? The primary concern should be with the farmer. And I want to say this, that you know, we should not be scared, even if Kenya overproduces tea. In Brazil, one of the things that they do they all the time have an oversupply of coffee and they release it depending on the prices, but they keep their quota. So if the farmer is not able to produce enough so that Kenya can keep its quota, then everything else that we're doing can, can, can go to naught. Even with the oil producers, the starting point is to protect the oil producer, it, be it a nation or a state, but you start with the producer. So I, I plead, because it's going to come to you. And I know one of these days I'm going to ask for support for those who grow sugarcane, to support the sugarcane farmer. Before you come even before the mill, before you come to the packer, before you come to the person who own, owns a warehouse, uh, I think if you turn it, the priority on, it, on its head and begin to support the, the warehouse owner or the packer more than the farmer, I think it would be very uh, terrible for us. Sometimes in the past, when I used to live in Kericho, you, you see all those highland, uh, African highlands, very big signboards, eh? Brook Bond. Eh? But you go to those farms, the way they were making sure that they get the profit, how people were working in those farms, you know, 
uh, the terms and conditions of their employment, how they were looked after their care and welfare. It was zero. But when the ordinary farmer in Kipsigi started growing his own tea, you could see a little difference. And the, by, by the way, the best tea does not come necessarily from the large scale, large scale owners. Some of the best tea comes from the simple farmer with five acres, with 10 acres. And this is the person we want to protect in this, in this bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I know there's a lot of problem uh, in these amendments that have been brought by the, uh, by the National Assembly. And more particularly, I wanted to talk about the new impositions that have been placed uh, against the, the players in the tea industry. And those are found if you have the, the bill from the, the amended bill from the National Assembly from uh, Clause 24D, or even 24B, it is requiring registration, for example, of a warehouse operator. What is wrong with requiring a warehouse operator in relation to a tea to be registered as such? I see no problem with that. And then there's the registration, registration of tea packers. If the farmer in order to survive in this competitive industry, has been a member of some cooperative or, or, or some organization. Registration of a tea packers, I don't see anything wrong with this. And then registration of a tea buyer, that is found in clause 24F. Registration of tea brokers, that is found in clause 24H. And then the registration of a management agent, uh, and also registration of uh, tea auction organizers in paragraph 24K. No, I, I, I know some tea auction, auctioneers. I know how they do their business. And you know, they do everything in the book to make sure that they enhance their profits. And if they are not licensed and managed properly, then that is where the farmer is going to lose a lot of money. And those who are calling upon us to make uh, those who do parking and uh, auctioneering become tea agents, I, I think you are, you are trying to make sure that the toil and blood of those who actually every morning go to the farm uh, are, are in vain. I think that that would not, uh, that would not be right. And the Provisions and relate, uh, the interpretation clause, Mr. Speaker, you find the definition of who an auction organizer is. Uh, and I think this definition is also very important. Because sometimes you have players, like people who trade with the government, who do business with the government. Even we had people doing business with Kemsa. And after they did business with Kemsa, their names disappeared. We don't know who they are. Uh, their names cannot be disclosed. So I don't see what is wrong in giving a definition of who a questionnaire organizer is, which it says it means a person, company, or firm established for the purpose of organizing tea auctions. What's wrong with that? Uh, what's wrong with that? To be a lawyer, I, I, I need to satisfy some, 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 some qualification and requirements. To be a doctor, to be an architect, even to be a member of parliament. By the way, if you forgot, in the constitution it defines who can become a member of parliament and how to become a member of parliament or how not to become a, a member of parliament. Now, what about the so-called auctioneer, auction organizer? Why, why would the law run away from defining who that person is? So that that small farmer in the value added chain can understand who they are dealing with up to the person who is making that uh, English tea from Kenyan tea in London. Why would the farmer in Limuru not be able to know all these persons and the qualifications? And by the way, Mr. Speaker, if you, if you are in the world of betting on horses, uh, there's a street here in Nairobi where some people who know how to do this business, they would know 
when the horse was born, where the mother of the little horse came from, and so on and so on, the, fa the entire family tree. So, uh, uh, so this, this is a useful provision in this, in this uh, tea bill. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I know today we don't have all the time in the world, uh, but I would beseech those that uh, uh, are probably not inclined to, to pass this bill, I would appeal to you that we pass this bill. There are a lot of things that can be done later in terms of enforcement, implementation, a lot of things which are not clear. Uh, when it comes to the other players in the sector, they can be covered through the regulations. But I, I think that if you kill, because this one will forever be known as chariot bill, if you bill it, kill it at this stage or try to take it to mediation, I think we'll go to the next election without a team bill. And that would be a wrong, wrong mistake to do. And particularly for the first time when the other house is agreeing with us and you want us to go back there when they have agreed with us, I, I think it will be uh, like we have lost sight and uh, we need our eyes to be opened. With those few remarks, I thank you, sir, Mrs. Mr. Okay, uh, Honorable Senator, I see a lot of interest. And this is our bill. And you'll have more time also to discuss. So I'll give five minutes each so that we are able to move faster. Senator Sakaja. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to, at the outset, uh, congratulate. Uh, I don't know if he's my younger brother or my age mate, but uh, Senator Aaron <laughs> is younger by a year or two. Um, for this landmark, landmark legislation, that he has brought to this house that will be forever remembered. I want to thank also the committee led by Senator Ndwiga who has given us a brief exposition of the history of this struggle um, that has taken place both in this house and outside this house. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to thank as well, even before I go into the details of this bill, because many people have lobbied. I think Senator Aaron, uh, he tweeted earlier for people to lobby their senators. And I received numerous calls and SMSs. I want to thank one James, who says he's a voter in Nairobi from Nyeri, Alice Kihara from Mbakasi, uh, my teacher at the university, Dr. Kones, I think is the same one who vied from Bomet. He taught me maths at the University of Nairobi. Um, and also Mudoni Waidanji. And what I did, I called back one of them to find out if they know what they're talking about and ask them what it is in this bill that they actually like. And they were clear. Because you know somebody can say, just pass it, it'll help us. And they're not a farmer. They don't know what this uh, does. Mr. Speaker, my county doesn't grow tea but we're the largest consumers of tea locally. In Nairobi, we're the largest consumers of everything. But Mr. Speaker, looking at this bill, it speaks to a lot that needs to be done. Um, based on the economics of our country, agriculture, which uh, pro produces almost 33% of GDP, um, according to the World Bank report, Mr. Speaker, of the Kenya Economic Update, we're talking about 31.4% uh, of reduction of rural poverty and 56% of the total labor force. But the disconnect, which I know many people don't realize, is that despite those numbers, the contribution to revenue, the agriculture is still below 10%. And why is that, Mr. Speaker? It is because we have not properly addressed the issues of value addition. That people are busy, but they are not actually creating revenue and creating wealth in this country, and other people are, are creating the wealth, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, unless we, 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 we decisively deal with the issues of value addition, Kenyans will be busy in farms, uh, clogging up what we call you know, non-meaningful non, non, non GDP, but not increasing revenue in this country. And that is what we need to address. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, if you look at, 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 at the level um, of poverty by people who are engaged in agriculture, it is extremely high. You know, the normal tea farmer cannot be compared to the person who's dealing in those auctions or the people in the, you know, um, in, 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 in this, in KTDA and these organizations who don't even grow a single crop of tea, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, it is the same with maize. It is the same with coffee. And Mr. Speaker, I will tell you, and you know from where you're from, that one of the biggest causes of poverty in Western region, for instance, is maize farming. And we need radical leadership who will address the root cause of these issues. Mr. Speaker, many times we are just like cashiers, and I know because I farm maize in Kitale. And throughout the year, you're putting in money, and at the end of the year, what you get cannot relate to it. Look at sugarcane, a big cause of poverty. The most fertile parts of this country is Western. But all those farmers are extremely poor. 
unless somebody actually tells us what we need to do properly, unless we as leaders say the truth, why, why do we have to farm sugar cane the way we do in Western, yet a farmer in Brazil will farm his, his sugar cane, sugar will live there, it will come to the port of Mombasa, they'll pay whatever taxes they pay, comes all the way to the gate of Mumias and is cheaper than the, than the, than the sugar, an equivalent kg from Mumias right there, Mr. Speaker. These radical questions must be answered. Because, Mr. Speaker, we cannot do the same thing the same way over years and expect different results. That is the definition of madness. So I hope as we pass this bill that we shall also have a radical view at all these other crops and agriculture as a sector to ask these radical questions and to transform it. But ultimately with our mind at the common Mwanainchi, the farmer, the smallholder farmer. And then later we can deal with those middlemen and the cartels. Mr. Speaker, I was just joking with Senator Andriga that indeed in any society you do need the brokers. And, and Senator Aaron Cheriot will agree with me. You do need brokers to some extent. In the animal kingdom, Mr. Speaker, if there are no brokers, then lions would be eating grass because there's no gazelle. You need a middleman in between the lion and the grass, Mr. Speaker. And in the same, in the same breath, even in this one, but let's regulate them. Let's regulate what they do, but our main focus must be the farmer. So I want to affirm all of those who've called me and, uh, and, and, and those who've lobbied that we support these amendments. Of course, Mr. Speaker, we must state that I think it is very untidy that the National Assembly has amended the entire bill. These are almost 30 amendments. I don't know how we will vote at them. It's like they've rewritten the bill. But for the sake of the common farmer, for the sake of the tea farmers all over the country, not just in Rift Valley or Central, but all over the country, wherever they do it, in Kisi, in Nyamira, Senator Mogheni brought issues of tea, you know, in Western, in uh, Vihiga. They... Senator Haneri. Mr. Speaker, I uh, want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to add my voice. And I just want to make it clear because there's a notion out there that we are passing the National Assembly bill. It is not so. I want it to be very clear that this was a Senate bill sponsored by Senator Chiriot. Uh, and it was a product of an ad hoc committee which I had the privilege to sit on. And therefore, what we are debating today is the amendments that were made by the National Assembly on our bill. Mr. Speaker, I will begin uh, by saying that uh, this is a day that I personally have really longed for, and on behalf of my farmers. Mr. Speaker, the hard work that we put in as an ad hoc committee, the hard work that Senator Chiriot put in to develop the bill is coming to fruition. And I want to urge senators, particularly those who, come f who don't come from tea growing areas, to listen to us senators who represent tea farmers. We are the ones who know precisely what our farmers are going through. Mr. Speaker, this bill is going to be an early Christmas for our tea farmers. I want to plead with you, my colleagues, Let's give the farmers, the tea farmers, an early uh, Christmas uh, gift. Mr. Speaker, for years, the cartels in the sectors have thrived on the hard work of the farmers. The cartels have enriched themselves while the farmers who toil in the farm continue to languish in poverty. This bill is going to be the game changer. We may not agree 100% with the amendments that were made by the National Assembly, but I want to plead that uh, we do not want to lose the gains that we are already getting just because we don't agree with one or two amendments that were made by the National Assembly. Let's pass the amendments as they are. Let's get the assent of the president on the bill so that the farmers can start benefiting from the gains so then if there are any other amendments and uh, if there are people who are uncomfortable with the little amendments here and there, it can always be corrected, Mr. Speaker. There can all, always be further amendments. But we cannot afford to delay this any further. We have to pass it today. There was wisdom, Mr. Speaker, in you and the leadership of this House uh, classifying this as an urgent matter and therefore calling for this uh, agenda, this uh, 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 special sitting. And therefore, we, can, uh, we cannot just uh, uh, wish that away. We have timelines. We have to pass uh, this bill. Mr. Speaker, 
When I was growing up, tea farming was very uh, profitable to the tea farmers, Mr. Speaker. My father was a tea farmer. I inherited the tea farm, and I'm a tea farmer by extension, Mr. Speaker. I must declare my, uh, my, my interest, and I can uh, tell you uh, it is not the same. When we were going around with the Senator Chariot Ad Hoc Committee, we met so many farmers in various areas uh, in the country. And Mr. Speaker, farmers have reached a stage where they are now uprooting their tea. So many people have uprooted. Even me, I have uprooted part of uh, the tea I had grown because it was not profitable. It was not viable any, anymore. Mr. Speaker, by passing this bill, we will revive uh, the Tea Board of Kenya and the Tea Research Foundation. And Mr. Speaker, this will ensure efficiency and transparency in uh, licensing uh, of the tea brokers. Mr. Speaker, by passing this bill, we will ensure that buyers and brokers will pay farmers within 14 days of selling the tea. As opposed to what it is now, Mr. Speaker, when they pay at their own whims. Mr. Speaker, by passing this bill, we'll be abolishing majority of the taxes that are levied on the tea farmer. At the moment, Mr. Speaker, the tea farmer pays up to, was it 42 taxes? 42 taxes, Mr. Speaker. How do you get profit when you pay 42 taxes? Mr. Speaker, listen to those of us who represent farmers. We plead with you. Stand with us as we fight for our farmers so that we ensure that uh, we give our farmers uh, an early Christmas gift. Mr. Speaker, I see my time is up. I Senator Ibrahim Maina. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support this bill. And uh, as I support this bill, I want to say, let us all remember the history of this country. Let us remember where Kenya was, when Kenya was strong in its agriculture, when the coffee farmers, when the tea farmers, when the maize farmers, when the sugar farmers, when the cattle farmers used to have their gains. They used to have justice for what they produce. Mr. Speaker, some of us who come from tea growing areas, I want to tell you it's a misery today when you meet farmers and they give you the, their stories. In Nyeri, we have had a case where some young man was captured on the social media, uprooting tea. And let me say, if you look at tea farmers, they grow tea in the whole of their small chamber, the small scale of farmers. Four acres, it is totally tea at the house. And Mr. Speaker, when tea prices started collapsing, and they collapsed, not because tea is not bringing money in the world market. They collapsed because, Mr. Speaker, there is a system that came around in this country. KTDA was working before. But for some reason today, farmers' money, farmers' gains have been invested in unproductive areas, and the farmer ends up getting nothing. Today, as we speak, this year, the farmers got literally little to nothing for their tea. Not to talk about the miserable coffee farmers who have today given up and they are living in misery. A crop that is making money, our neighboring countries, Ethiopia, Uganda, Rwanda are making good money in these crops, tea and coffee, for example. Kenya, you can see all the silos built in this country by, if I may say, because it's the truth by the colonialists, for stalling grains, stalling maize, 
stalling wheat. Today, Kenya is importing maize. But coming to the tea, we have an opportunity, and I'm glad this house is the one which came up with this bill. We have an opportunity to save, to safeguard the tea industry. And I appeal to, to this house that let us pass this bill with the amendment thereof. If tomorrow anybody thinks of anything better to bring in, they can bring it. But for now, let us pass it as it is quickly so that at least there will be something that the Kenyan farmer in this country can hear, can see some hope of tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, I want to say, let us not mince words. Things don't just happen. Why are tea farmers in a desperate situation they are in? Why have tea farmers been impoverished? Why have the coffee farmers been impoverished? Why are the daily industry farmers not getting the, 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 the real return? Mr. Speaker, I want to say, Kenya must look at itself. And in this country, I, want, I dare say, COVID or no COVID, if we were growing today fruits, if we were growing maize, if we were growing tea uh, in, a, in, a, in large quantities and the coffee, we would still be selling and doing well. But now our economy is hard hit and we will have to look at agriculture. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, for the tea farmers, this day is a great day. And I want to assure them that looking at the members in this house, I have no doubt they have the sympathies of the lives of our, our, our common people. And this bill will be passed. And Mr. Speaker, let me add that. Time, time, uh, Senator. Senator, is, is, is the, the interests are so many. The interests are so many. Your time is up. At least you have made your point. Senator Mtula Jr. Thank you, Speaker. I, I rise to... Yes, sorry, Speaker, could you... Senator Maina, take your seat. Yes, he's... Uh... <laughs> I thought you were calling me. No. No, no. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. I rise to support the amendments and uh, motion. Mr. Speaker, it would have been nice if... Um, and I'm speaking now to the Chair, that if members had been taken through this, because there are concerns, and some of them are genuine concerns, and there are lots of amendments, like Senator Sakaja has mentioned, and it's unusual for a bill to have so many amendments, but taking them through would have been helpful. But we trust you, the chairman, that when you say some of the issues that are raised can be addressed later, it's not the promise that Senator, uh, Kip, uh, not Kip Chumba, the former majority leader mentioned here when we were opposing the audit bill. Mr. Speaker, I have had the opportunity of going to a place in Chinga. Chinga Tea Factory is in Nyeri. And I saw the tea, and I saw the roads. Somebody mentioned that the cess that, was, that is collected by county governments is supposed to improve the roads where tea farms are. When we were growing up, now counties are apportioning that money to do their usual funny things. But we must go back there where they collect cess from tea farmers supposed to improve the infrastructure for those roads. Because when I traveled around Nyeri, the roads around the tea farms were good. The second thing is we are supporting this, some of us who would don't grow coffee. And please listen to uh, tea and listen to us. Because Senator Ombo is going to bring a bill about something strategic about Kitui, Meru, Makueni, etc., etc. You will be surprised that Mboni constituency where I come from grows possibly the best coffee in Kenya. Possibly the best coffee. I have eight factories in the village. But those persons who grow coffee, which was grown by my grandfather. And my father asked me and made sure that I undertake that that coffee will never be uprooted. Where we buried him is surrounded by coffee. We are supporting this so that the questions surrounding tea and coffee can also be addressed. The cartels that exist in tea 
They also exist in coffee. Possibly worse in coffee. I went to Stockholm with, one, with uh, members here, and we sat in a Starbucks restaurant. The most expensive coffee was up in the shelves in Starbucks in Switzerland. But yet the farmer here is so poor and miserable. I went with Senator Omogeni recently, and condolences for the loss of the governor, because at that time we were questioning the governor about something. But we, we happen to be in a tea area. Let me tell you, I, a person who was disabled was being forced to take his tea five kilometers away because the board was quarreling. We know the problem about tea and, and tea and coffee. It is the auction. And the question I was asking even Senator Cherio this morning was whether or not the auction that is proposed in Clause 24 here by the National Assembly is going to address the question of the cartels who have invaded the tea auction to the detriment of poor, miserable farmers. We are also supporting this, and I'm glad this has been brought by Senator Choriot to explain, that even in other discourses that are going to be in the country for future, there's no law that will be perfect, Senator Choriot. So when we come to you and ask you to support something else, please remember that we are supporting this, not because it is perfect, but because for now it is the best. But, Mr. Speaker, why is it, what is it, is this law going to guarantee the small-scale farmer what we want? Is it lack of laws that has, has caused this problem? What's your point of order, Senator Murkomen? Oh. I hope you hold Mutula's, uh, Senator Mutula's time, Mr. Speaker, because uh, it's what I'm going to raise is a bit more, looks like trivial, but it's important. For our colleagues who are in the, this uh, Zoom, Mr. Speaker, who are coming in virtually, there should be a minimum level of decorum. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we project people here in the Senate driving inside cars, uh, and at the same time we are watching Mutula across the country and other people speaking, you, you must enforce, if someone has to appear virtually, there must be some level of uh, seated somewhere, stoic, wearing a tie or properly dressed, Mr. Speaker, you know, so that then we don't distract us. We are being distracted and the country is being distracted because people will be wondering, there are people in the Senate, there are some others in the streets of Nairobi watching, the, watching proceedings from outside the speaker and confusing the public. That, that's why I've not called them <laughs> to proceed, Senator, but we are, we are working on it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, I was talking about political goodwill because I think the part of the problem in all cash crops in Kenya is political goodwill. If there's political goodwill in maize, sugarcane, coffee, Mr. Speaker, the uh, poor farmer is going to benefit. I, I just mentioned the, the question of Kisi, uh, Nyamira, where we went to, um, to a factory, uh, not a factory, where we, we, we saw for ourselves the problems that arise when we don't protect our poor farmers. Mr. Speaker, I want to finish by saying that a time has come and Senator, uh, Senator, uh, both Senator Orengo and Senator Sakaja mentioned Brazil. By the way, Brazil grows robuster coffee. It's not the best. But they market it as if the world depends on it. Even Colombia. Kenya grows the best tea and best coffee. Our tea is blended in Dubai and mixed with other tea that is not of high grade and then sold at a very high price. Mr. Speaker, when I went to Nyeri, I discovered that the tea that is packaged in Chinga Tea Factory in Nyeri is not even sold in Kenya. It's sold abroad because it's packaged on site. Can we also benefit from first grade tea? I mean, what is that so much to ask, Chairman, that we have to take Mbuni, Nescafe, and those things because it's bad coffee? No. We must benefit from it, but Mr. Speaker, we must support this because this is the, one of the best avenues to ensure that the poor Kenyans can get something into their pockets. Two leaves and a bud must make sense, but an ordinary farmer in Kenya who's growing tea or coffee is miserable because of cartels and pricing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Senator Murkomen. Mr. So speaker, like uh, <clears throat> my colleagues who've spoken have uh, done, I want to start, Mr. Speaker, by congratulating Senator Chiriot, uh, who, Mr. Speaker, 
uh, came up with the ad hoc committee and the bill, and for the teamwork of all the senators who worked in that team, uh, Mr. Speaker, in that ad hoc committee. And I'm glad, Mr. Speaker, that the bill was so popular that it did not suffer uh, the usual uh, problems that our bills go through in National Assembly. I know, I know the work that Senator Chiriot had to go through from the background, lobbying in the National Assembly. Otherwise, his bill, Mr. Speaker, would have been declared money bill, like many beautiful bills from this House have been declared uh, money bills. Mr. Speaker, this bill is for hustler tea growers, it's for the small man and small woman in the very far-flung areas of our country. Mr. Speaker, it is for those who have been forgotten for a long period of time in the tea sector. And for that reason, this bill deserves our support. Mr. Speaker, I am a member of the Agriculture Committee. And I must confess here that, led by our chairman, we had to go through this bill, scrutinize. Mr. Speaker, I hasten to say uh, Senator Kabaka was also instrumental in this committee who, Mr. Speaker, we are going to bury tomorrow and we eulogize him for the good work he did in the Agriculture Committee where we serve together. And Mr. Speaker, we agree with those who have raised the issues concerning the bill out there, including the Kenya Tea Development Authority, KTDA, including, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, these are the uh, private, Mr. Speaker, private processors who have raised some certain issues, we agree that there are issues that require to be seen. In fact, even the role of the county government, Mr. Speaker, needs to be enhanced. We know that there are certain shortcomings that are in the bill. But Mr. Speaker, we have consulted here with our colleagues when we came here this afternoon, and reason that, Mr. Speaker, because of the process that our bill goes through, we first secure and save the benefits that have come to the tea farmer now, and Mr. Speaker, then revisit the bill when it has passed, and see which other amendments we can make to make it even a far much better idea, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we are doing this. For those who have concerns out there, those who are interested in the reforms of the tea sector, who are worried about the provisions that have been put in place, we have said when the board is, in, is back to place, we as a House will again, led by Senator Cher Cheriot if, if, or the Agriculture Committee, my chair, uh, Senator um, uh, Ndwika, we can come up with those amendments, listen to them, introduce those amendments by the time we come back, uh, February, March, then we look at what we want to improve and make even the tea bill even more, far much better. So we are doing this in the knowledge that we have an opportunity again to revisit the issues that are here. Number two, Mr. Speaker, we need to do away completely with the AFA and the Crops Act, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that was a very bad experiment, a bad experiment that has affected the tea sector, it has worsened the sugar sector, Mr. Speaker. As a member of Agriculture Committee, we get so many petitions about sugar. And we were in Kisumu the other day with all the senators from that region. Mr. Speaker, you, the worst part is even the grain sector, Mr. Speaker. It's been affected so badly. You are a maize farmer and you come from maize farming county. So we need, we are going as an Agriculture Committee to work with all the senators who have brought bills, but also as an Agriculture Committee, we unpack this Crops Act and go back, Mr. Speaker, to the institutions that we had that are sector-wise, that can give concentration on the uh, uh, various uh, crops, Mr. Speaker, that can benefit the people of the country. Once again, I want to thank Senator Cheriot and thank my colleagues who are in this chamber who have stood with Common uh, Mwanainchi, the farmers, and I tell without any fear of contradiction every other citizen of this republic and stakeholders that we have agreed as a Senate that your cries are not in vain we are going to sit down together again and revisit this bill to make it even better and to accommodate your concerns. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Wetangula. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also stand to support uh, this uh, bill. Saluting Senator Cheriot for having brought a motion to which we all spoke to that culminated into this bill. Mr. Speaker, as we do so, I start where the distinguished Senator for Elgeo Malakwet left, that there are still people out there who are concerned that their views and issues have not been brought on board. 
KTDA is grumbling. I know that is a popular view that uh, they should be reformed, and reforms are important. But it's also important that when you are reforming an institution, you listen to them. T, Mr. Speaker, is arguably the only crop in this country that is still functioning in its production, its processing, its sales, and in terms of returns. The coffee sector is dead, or literally on the deathbed. Sugar is gone. Maize is gone. Pyrethrum is gone. Name it, Mr. Speaker. So as we move this T-bill, it's incumbent upon the government, and Senator Ndwiga, I don't know if he's left or he's still here, has been on the front line in championing issues of farmers. Mr. Speaker, as we talk about tea today, the cereals boards are not open to take in the farmer's crop for a harvest that started in late August. As we speak here, Mumias is dead. Nzoya is Mahututi and many others. As we speak here, Mr. Speaker, the coffee farmers are suffering. So as we support this process of change, let it not be change for one sector only. And I think those of us who were in the 10th Parliament stand indicted for having blindly passed the AFA bill that consolidated all agricultural laws into one without a proper transition, proper management, proper structures, and AFA just became a monster. So deconstructing AFA, Mr. Speaker, is the way to go. We want to see the Sugar Act. We want to see the Pyrethrum Act back. We want to see all acts of parliament that were there that made the nourishment of crop farming in this country back on the shelves of our laws. Equally important, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that agriculture is devolved. I've seen a memorandum somewhere, Senator Chariot, from the governors, COG, uh, complaining that their views were also not taken on board sufficiently or at all. So as we pass this, we must know that legislation cannot be cast in stone. It's a process. And we can continue improving where it is necessary to make things work better. So passing this bill should not be an end by the beginning of positive reforms in the tea sector that will make it possible for farmers to get just returns from their sweat. They wake up in the morning, toil and moil in the sun, in the heat. Some are beaten by snakes in the tea farms. And at the end of the day, they end up getting very little. This has to be stopped. This has to be checked. This has to be reformed. So I support the bill, Mr. Speaker, and urge the Committee of Agriculture to enjoin the proponent of this bill to continue looking at how we can make things better for the tea farmer in this country. Thank you. Senator Kangata. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to thank members uh, of the Ad Hoc Committee on Tea, which uh, generated this bill. I was a member of that uh, committee. Uh, we went around to various places, including Muranga County, uh, at a place called Gatanga Constituency, Gatora Shopping Center, and we visited one tea factory. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, the reason why I am supporting this bill is because, one, tea is one of the most important exchange earners for this country. Currently, money sent from diaspora is number one earner of dollar money, uh, but number two is tea. And tea has been at number two spot for the longest period of time. Mr. Speaker, sir, we all know the importance of foreign exchange. And therefore, once we ensure this crop is supported, our farmers are supported, our shilling will continue uh, being stabilized, and therefore, we need to support this crop. 
It employs millions of Kenyans. It creates a value addition in agriculture. As correctly stated by my colleagues, we have had a situation where coffee collapsed, pyrethrum collapsed, we had a situation where sugar collapsed. It is only tea that is still going strong. But now, once we bring these reforms, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have no doubt, tea is going to become the very and most important crop, not only for Kenya, but I would imagine an important contribution to the growth of Africa, Mr. Speaker, sir. Moranga County, Mr. Speaker, sir, has 10 tea factories serving the small scale farmers. We start from tea factories in Madhioya all the way to Gatanga constituency. They employ thousands of people. They create a market for our small scale farmers. And therefore, it was very important on our part to come up and support this bill. Mr. Speaker, sir, this bill addresses several problems which tea farmers has been experiencing. Number one, the overtaxation of the tea farmer. Tea farmer currently pays almost 41, 42 different types of taxes. Number two, the cess that is collected by the counties. Mr. Speaker, sir, various counties from the regions where farmers grow teas, they have been taking tea cess. Instead of reinvesting that money to create, to build good roads in tea growing regions, they have been expending that money with other works and making roads in the tea growing areas to become deplorable, to become neglected. And therefore, this bill is going to address that problem. The second, third issue is the issue of tea board. Mr. Speaker, sir, few, few, few years ago, we created a body called AFA. It collapsed several parastatos into one entity called AFA. But now we are creating tea board to specifically deal with issues of tea. Number four, the issue of auction. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have had a situation where we have one auction at Mombasa, but a, a parallel market has been created outside that auction. That problem is going to be remedied by compelling all tea to be sold through the auction. Mr. Speaker, sir, that parallel market of tea has made prices at the tea auction to become depressed because buyers are not going into the auction. They are preferring what we call private treaties. As a result, government has been losing taxes. Those transactions, the so-called direct sales, are opaque. We do not know how much they fetch for KTDA. So therefore, let us take ALT into the auction. The auction is going to become more vibrant. It's going to create more employment. It's going to ensure the market is open and transparent. Finally, the issue of payment period. This bill, once passed, is going to compel farmers to be paid within 14 days from the date when the auction deal was finalized. Currently, it takes so many days, notwithstanding an auction deal has been finalized. Okay, I'll seek your intelligence because I can see the time is not, uh, I'll, I'll reduce to three minutes, Senator Faki. I pray that you give me more time because I come from the county that hosts the auction. Uh, first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to congratulate uh, my colleague, Senator Chiriot, and the Committee of Agriculture led by Senator Ndwiga for this very important bill. And from the outset, I want to make it clear that I'm not opposed to the farmers, key farmers in Kenya gaining what they are supposed to gain for their hard-earned uh, uh, crops. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, there are several issues that I want to draw your attention to in this uh, uh, bill that was passed by the National Assembly. First and foremost is Article uh, Section 24L. Uh, 24L 
is on the auction process, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. The proposal, the Act provides that uh, all tea has to be taken through the auction in Mombasa. Mr. Speaker, sir, the demand at the moment and the supply of the tea in Mombasa are at variance. The supply is more than the uh, demand that is, uh, uh, g that is uh, coming up in the auction. And therefore, if we allow all the teas to be sold through the auction, the, the market will be flooded, and therefore the prices will come down, and this will adversely affect the farmers. At the moment, Mr. Speaker, sir, there are two, two options. You sell through private treaty or the private arrangement, and you can also sell through the auction. The private sales, Mr. Speaker, sir, complement the auction because in the auction sales, not all teas are able to be taken uh, during the auction, and therefore the surplus is sold through private uh, uh, arrangements. Mr. Speaker, sir, it, is also, it will also be unconstitutional for somebody to be forced to sell his produce through the auction, yet he can get a similar or a higher price through a private arrangement. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, the fact that uh, all teas will be sold through the auction will adversely affect the industry because the the, 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 there are special teas, such as uh, teas that are sold directly to the buyers who pay better prices than what is paid for at the auction. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker sir, the second issue is with regard to uh, the levy the tea levy, Mr. Speaker, which will also affect our teas uh, because it will make it more expensive for the, for the Kenyan tea compared to the, other, to the other teas. Mr. Speaker, sir, the auction covers 10 countries. It, is, it covers Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, Congo, Ethiopia, Malawi, Mozambique, and Madagascar. All those things. Your time is up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, just wind up, please. One minute. All these 10 countries, Mr. Speaker, sir, are served by the Mombasa Tea Auction. So any messing up with the auction, Mr. Speaker, sir, is likely to affect the country, and this will contribute to the decline in the uh, purchase of, of tea in this country. Mr. Speaker, sir, finally, as you have limited my time, I want to say that the, 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 the auction in Mombasa covers about 75% of the tea that is sold in the country. The 15% is sold by the private uh, 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 treaties, and the other remaining uh, 5 or 10% is sold by the packers within the country. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, it will not affect much if the two systems are allowed to be used in the sale of tea. Uh, therefore, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to oppose these amendments that have been done to the, to the bill. Unless those issues are addressed, I will not uh, support the amendments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Milgo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for this chance to also support uh, this uh, bill as amended. I'm supporting it as a, a senator that comes from uh, the largest uh, tea growing area, Bomet County, three quarter of Bomet County grows tea, and I'm one of the greatest farmers as well. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me thank uh, Senator Chiriot for coming up with this uh, bill uh, together with the Agriculture Committee led by Senator Andrika for the wonderful job they've done. Mr. Speaker, sir, tea has been a very important crop, uh, not only uh, to our farmers, but to Kenya as well, being one of the greatest honor, and therefore has actually add, added onto the economy of this country. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, in the past when we grew up, tea used to play a very important role in ensuring that uh, there was put food on the table, school fees was paid, and very many other uh, services uh, that were required at the home. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so apart from this, uh, tea had uh, even been proven to be uh, medicinal. However, uh, of late, there has been very many challenges, particularly 
when it comes to auctioning tea. Mr. Speaker, sir, to the extent that uh, we have a uh, very many farmers even uh, taking to a brute uh, tea because of the fact that they have been very impoverished uh, after taking tea as a major group. Mr. Speaker, sir, many of our youth, we've been encouraging them to take up agriculture as a business. And many of them, uh, like in my county, took up tea planting. But then right now, uh, they are actually uh, worse than uh, they started because of the many cartels. The major challenge, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, the cartels along the value chain. And in this case, I think uh, Article 24, that is dealing with auctioning, is very important because we, uh, the farmers ought to know who are the brokers, who are the, uh, the packers, who are actually the operators in the warehouses. And then in this case, uh, I think that will go a long way to ensure that uh, farmers are even brought to light. As, as things are standing right now, farmers do not even know who are the brokers uh, for their tea in the factory. And in addition to that, uh, many at times, there is a lot of taxation. Many of our farmers are so worried that uh, this tea has been taxed to the extent that they earn very meager, uh, from very meager uh, amount of money from this particular crop, and this is not even enough or to recoup what they have put. They have been put in terms of fertilizers, in terms of labor, and in this case, it is just like a... Okay, your time is up, Senator Mogheni. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity, but also to stand up and mourn with my people of Nyamira for the loss of our governor, Mze John Obira Nyagarama, who has had a very uh, successful career in the tea industry. My condolences to the widow, uh, family, and the entire people of Nyamira County. Mr. Speaker, if I was to speak candidly without blinking an eye, the people I represent here from the county of Nyamira want legislation that will regulate the tea industry to be enacted as soon as yesterday. So I fully support wholeheartedly their recommendations and amendments that have been proposed by the National Assembly. The Speaker, I did mention some time that I had gone to a village in Nyeri called uh, Kiaruhiu. And the farmers there told me that their priority at that time was to see to it that the government was coming up with legislation that will spur up the tea industry and that will make tea farming to be meaningful. Mr. Speaker, I support these amendments because for the first time in the history of this country, Mr. Speaker, there is a proposal in Clause 24D to create a tea fund that will assist in price stabilization of farmers. I don't know whether my colleague senators understand the import of that clause. Mr. Speaker, all that means is that maybe from next financial year, the government will be setting aside a fund that can be used as a top-up to pay farmers when the prices are so low. Mr. Speaker, like in the last financial year in Nyamira, and we have about six factories. We, have, we are constructing one, so we are going to have about seven next year. My farmers earned between nine shillings and 15 shillings from bonus. That is peanuts. That cannot support peace and farmers in uh, getting enough money to pay school fees, take care for their needs. So the, the fact that there is this proposal in this bill to create a tea fund should elicit support from majority of our senators. Mr. Speaker, brokers, and that will be my final point, brokers who have been the biggest beneficiaries from the tea farmers, their fee, their earning has been reduced from 1.5% to 0.5%. And who is going to benefit? It is the farmer. So I want to urge my colleagues from non-tea growing regions to stand with us for the benefit of the poor farmers whom we represent in this house. I support Mr. Speaker. Senator Kimani Wamatangi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also rise to support the, the amendments and the bill itself, Mr. Speaker, and congratulate the committee and congratulate Senator Chariot and the rest of the senators who have participated, both in the committee and in the subcommittee, Mr. Mr. Speaker, in the ad hoc committee. Mr. Speaker, one of the biggest problems that we have had in this country, and especially 
in marketing or sale of uh, cash crops, Mr. Speaker, that have a value chain uh, which does not necessarily uh, require local sales but benefit more when sales are global, Mr. Speaker, is lack of transparency. And uh, this is what has ailed uh, most of the industries, including the tea industry, Mr. Speaker. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Speaker, the value chain in sale of cash crops, and tea being one of the major ones, is a top-down uh, value chain, Mr. Speaker, where the biggest beneficiaries are the top and the lowest at the bottom, Mr. Speaker. And I don't want to be repetitive, but uh, all of us have uh, had this experience, Mr. Speaker. I once visited uh, a marketer in the UK who happens to hail from uh, one of the towns in uh, Asia, a place called Kerala, where they also grow tea. Mr. Speaker, in his whole warehouse, uh, he had uh, guneas or, or, or sacks and sacks of tea. But the ones he held most is Kenyan tea, Mr. Speaker, which indeed, not only other than blending together with other teas, they also repackage under foreign names. Mr. Speaker was interested and amused to see that a tea called Lipton, which sells greatly in the international market, is actually Kenyan tea. Uh, they buy our Kenyan tea, they package it with uh, their brand, and uh, it is said and known that when you are taking a cup of Lipton tea, you are, you are taking Indian or, or, or Asian tea, Mr. Speaker, but that's not so. Mr. Speaker, let me also uh, support that bill because I know the farmers in Kiambu, uh, in Lari, in Gatondo North, in Gatondo South, Mr. Speaker, in Limuru, and other parts of Kiambu, and the whole country, Mr. Speaker, have been waiting for a long, long time for this day, Mr. Speaker, when at least their voice can be heard. I hope, as one of the, my colleagues here said, that this can be a wake-up call to governors, that they now need to take this bill up once it has been passed so that they can rally uh, our small-scale farmers and support them, Mr. Speaker, so that at the counter-government le level, uh, agriculture being a devolved function, uh, that farmers then can start having their voice heard against the loud voice of the conglomerates, Mr. Speaker. When I was growing up in Kericho, Mr. Speaker, uh, where Senator Chariot uh, comes from, there used to be a season, Mr. Speaker, when many people would migrate from other parts of the town, of the, of the country, and come to Kericho. That was called bonus time. Your time is up. <laughs> uh, Senator Ali Abdullah Ibrahim. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, before I talk about the bill, I just want to send a message of condolences to a chief in my constituency who was beheaded, in, in Wajia County was beheaded by Al-Shabaab today. And his head was brought to one of the centers. These are the situations we are in. Uh, that said, Chair, uh, Mr. Speaker, I wish to support the, the motion or the, uh, as amended. Uh, Mr. Speaker, those of us, when, when you look at the way, when the, the, the people in Kenya who are at the grassroots, who are working very hard, when you see the way they suffer, and you see others, the way they behave, sometimes you even don't know what to say. Mr. Speaker, for me, I'm supporting this because of the local farmers. Uh, me, I'm not a tea growing area. We don't have tea. We don't have a lot of agriculture. But we are the consumers of tea, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we need the tea leaves. We need the tea farmers. We need the sugar farmers. We need the maize farmers. This country. Cartels have taken over everything, Mr. Speaker. And I want to urge the members of this house. They should not be very selfish. We need one another. And the way you need my vote today, I will need yours tomorrow. But this is not what happens in this house. I want to warn everybody that everybody is of the same importance in this house because of when we talk of livestock, when we talk of other issues, I want to be supported the way I'm supporting this now, Mr. Speaker. These are issues which are very important to most of us. When you talk of the locals, the people who really suffer, those ones who till the land, those ones who look after the animals, those are the people we should support, not those ones who are the top, the top 10%. That should not be the way to go, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, where you, 
when it's not only because of tea we talk, we need to talk about the coffee, as I said, we need to talk about the mug beans, we want to talk about the cabbages, we want to talk about the potatoes, we want to talk about the milk, so that all Kenyans feel happy. And when you take care of those ones at those lower levels, that is when Kenyans will feel that they are doing well, they are okay, they sleep well, their children go to school, that they, when they go to the hospitals, they are able to pay for everything they need. That is the only way. So I urge everybody and anybody who is in this field, who thought that they can just, you know, eat alone. No, we want to share the benefits of this country with everybody, and I wish to support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator uh, Honorable Speaker. First, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to support this bill. And uh, I want to begin by thanking Senator Chariot uh, for coming up uh, with these amendments. And uh, Senator Chariot is uh, truly uh, alive to the fact that uh, tea farming uh, has value addition. Honorable Speaker, I want to tell this house that when I was growing up and uh, I would visit my grandfather, my late grandfather, uh, I remember that uh, my great uh, grandfather, apart from being a teacher, he was also a tea farmer. Um, there, uh, Ruben uh, Haguri uh, educated all his children. I remember my aunties, my uncles on my father's side, they were educated through you know, tea farming. And I saw the value addition of uh, tea farming when I was growing up. But all of a sudden, honorable speaker, the, you know, the value slackened because of uh, lack of management and because of uh, you know, the fact that brokers had also gotten into the tea factory. But the clarion call of this bill is that we must support our tea farmers. And it is indeed our duty as senators to ensure that we support tea farmers. Honorable Speaker, tea farming has value addition if it is well managed, if it is well coordinated, and I'm happy because the board is there. The board is going to bring sanity to the tea industry because uh, brokers have come in, farmers are depressed, farmers feel that uh, no one is actually uh, keen about them, but the board is actually going to ensure that we raise the standards of tea farming and we make it also attractive. Honorable Speaker, when I started working for the first time in 1990, uh, you know, as a teacher, I decided that I was going to gift my father, um, the Inima, with uh, you know, tea plantains, and I did that. And I'm happy because even right now, my mother, who is a widow, is able to benefit from the tea farming. So I want to encourage tea farmers that uh, even if we support uh, the, this bill, it is going to help them and bring you know, you know, uh, value once more to the tea uh, industry. And I want to encourage my fellow senators that we must support this bill so that our farmers are happy. May it be a boon. May it be a golden opportunity. May it be a Christmas gift to our farmers all over in Kenya, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. I support. Senator Langard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for also giving me this opportunity to support this particular bill. I'm so happy, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I was among the ad hoc committee members, and I want to witness to this particular house and everybody outside there that all that in that bill is the contribution of the farmers uh, in their various places in this country. We went to Kericho, we went to Nyamira with uh, Kina Senator Omogeni. We went to Embu and we listened seriously to, an, uh, to the various issues that the farmers were raising. And I want to, be, uh, to, to say thank you to Senator Cherujod, which eventually uh, managed to make a, a bill out of the ad hoc committee issues that we collected all over. So I want to say that uh, the farmers are looking forward to this particular bill, Mr. Speaker. So many are writing to us in social media to support it. And I want to say that this will be an eye-opener, that even other uh, various crops will follow suit, and also they will come uh, to be assisted. But I want to say that uh, when the matter has to do with uh, tea farming, we went to Tea Research Foundation in Kericho, which used to be uh, a very admirable uh, tea research foundation, especially when it used to be East African Tea Research Foundation. And I want to tell you, Mr. to tell this house, Mr. Speaker, that 
that particular great institution because of the present management and the policy that is existing in T sector is almost at coma. It's about to collapse. We went there, people, uh, uh, the research which used to take place is no longer taking place. People were giving us a lot of issues that they are facing currently, and that one spilled over to the farmers. In fact, uh, the tea farming, uh, unless rescued by this particular bill, is, is in fact far much headed to a total collapse, simply because most of the farmers today, because of the, uh, the inefficiency of tea research foundation, are actually growing tea which are not of the standards uh, as, as required to this particular time. So I want to support this particular bill and say congratulations to Senator Chirujot. And I want to say, those are the institutions that have also issues to be addressed. This is not the end of everything. As uh, Kipchumba Murkomen was saying, further amendments will be done to accommodate it. But as of now, let us secure this particular golden opportunity that this particular uh, uh, house and the other uh, house has actually accorded to all of us. I want to thank everybody who has participated in making sure that this Senator Mtula Klaunt, what's your intervention? Speaker, as usual practice, that when somebody is invited to your gallery, you recognize them. There's a gentleman seated there, looks like Honorable Moses Kuria, I cannot tell, but you didn't recognize him. You didn't recognize him, and uh, he looks like a stranger. So uh, <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> I had not seen him. And with the mask, it even becomes more difficult. Is this Honorable Kuria? Oh, welcome, welcome to the Senate. Let's give him uh, the normal welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Senator Ochilayako. Senator Wako. Thank you, Chairman, for giving me this opportunity to talk on this very important bill. Once upon a time, when we were still at school, it is crops such as tea, coffee, pyrethrum, that earned the country the highest number of uh, uh, foreign exchange. Mr. Speaker, sir, it has been very sad indeed to see that from that pedestal, we came now to a period where farmers were uprooting their crops, whether coffee and, and now even tea and so on. So I wish to congratulate uh, the Senator of Kericho, the young man who, has, who initiated this bill, which we are now discussing, and which has gone through the process. I wish also to con 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 congratulate uh, both the Senate and the National Assembly for at least for once working in a very cooperative manner on the issue of bills. So that the bill comes here, we, de we debate it. It goes there, it's debated, it comes here and so on, rather than uh, foot dragging on this bill. So this provides a very good example. Mr. Speaker, sir, farmers have been uh, exploited, not just in Kenya, but all over the world. Farmers are exploited. And therefore, a sensitive government such as ours, we look to see ways in which the farmer can be protected. And we can say that on the whole, this bill now protects the farmer. Mr. Speaker, sir. The, the money, the auction charges, we have been told, has now come from 1.5% to 0.75%. The KTDA and the other management charges have come from 2.5% and now it's 1.5%, Mr. Speaker, sir. And more important, Mr. Speaker, sir, to me, is close 24L, 24L, which provides for time limit within which payments must be made. It states here that uh, the thief, brokers, buyers, and auction organizers 
shall ensure that the proceeds from the sale of tea are remitted to the tea factories accounts within 14 days. The speaker, sir, and the tea factory shall within uh, 30 days remit at least 50 percent. Your time is up, Senator. <laughs> Senator Cherarige. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. From the onset, I want to say for the first time we agree with uh, the National Assembly that in all instances they have brought amendments. Um, and Mr. Speaker, they are, the, the, the issue of amendments, I agree with my colleagues, that some of the amendments might have gone to the heart and the soul of the initial bill. Uh, on the issue of introducing the new part of 24, I'm happy to note that on the functions of the board, Mr. Speaker, one of them has been to look at the issue of taxes. You remember, Mr. Speaker, during uh, the, uh, tea suffers one of the biggest with around 42 form of taxation. Number two, Mr. Speaker, we have seen the issue of employing market strategy within the tea sector and ensuring that we have, I think another aspect and uh, in, in another issue is about tea research. Because, Mr. Speaker, the extension services within the uh, tea community has not been, were not well elaborated, Mr. Speaker. But now with the tea research that has been put in place and within, so that will advise farmers on the quality. We now have even purple tea that is being embraced by farmers across the region. From Nandi County, where I come from, uh, Mr. Speaker, I think Kericho is leading, followed by Nandi, among other regions. And, and therefore, uh, around three to almost the entire of Nandi, almost the five to six sub-counties, out of six sub-counties of Nandi, already have uh, uh, are planting tea. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of tea research, we would want uh, to, to agree that uh, there is need to support farmers in terms of extension services. Mr. Speaker, third point is that uh, we, we are worried because some of us who come from region who depend on agri-economics, uh, you see sugar sector has collapsed and this is part of Chemase. You remember we had issues and it also affecting your county. Over 5 million Kenyans are suffering who are depending on sugar again. We have issue of maize, Mr. Uh, milk maize also, Mr. Speaker. I hope those are issues that we can already address. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of milk, we have already complained because uh, one of the companies in this country, Mr. Speaker, controls 40 percent, but yet competition authority have done nothing in this country. Mr. Speaker, I agree that this is the right time for the tea farmers, the ordinary small-scale farmers, so that they can have, and I'm happy that the, the chair of our culture has confirmed to me that any other issues that is pending, Mr. Speaker, can be addressed even during this recess where memorandum can be issued. We are not passing this bill before, because it's perfect, but we can believe we can uh, go at some level and ensure that we perfectize as we proceed even to the, to the other issues. So I think uh, tea farmers in this country will have opportunity of having a regulatory regime and law that would try to address many other issues that we want to see in this sector, Mr. Speaker. I thank you very much. Senator Chila Yako. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak. Mr. Speaker, I nearly gave up a uh, thought on this very important topic I would not speak. Mr. Speaker, many years ago, uh, some little lady with whom I was in school, she wasn't my girlfriend, joked that uh, uh, tea without sugar is like, or uh, sex without love is like, or love without sex is like tea without sugar. There was that joke many years ago. <laughs> and uh, that joke, I did not believe in it, but I now believe in it. This tea thing is only good when we have sugar. And Mr. Chairman, who has been a friend of mine for many days, must bring the sugar one here. You know, many people uh, talk about the benefits of tea, which I agree with. They talk about uh, what we earn from tea, which I agree with. But there are many, many, many crops without which we would all be dead. And they don't bring money. Take, for instance, cassava. There are people who just feed on cassava. There are pastoralists who just take milk. There are fishermen who just eat fish. And they do not beg from anybody. So if you were to value how they feed their families, if you were to look at it from a food 
security perspective, you would really know that uh, agriculture is the mainstay of the economy and our entire well-being. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Senator Arun Cheriot for thinking about uh, tea farmers. But I also want him, and I want to ask him, to think about other farmers. This uh, tea business, in my view, has been rigged and has been brought uh, on a special sitting. Let's rig for other crops and for other activities that feed our people. We must not just look at tea and uh, only tea alone. If we do not look at other crops like sugarcane, sugarcane is a major employer, is a major earner. Uh, other crops that we don't even think of have brought up many people. Millet, people who are doing sweet potato, people like Professor Ongeri who uh, depend on matoke. So what we really need to uh, prioritize as a house is agriculture. And let us have special sitting after special sitting to discuss agriculture. And now that we are talking tea, let's remember that tea and sugar go together. In fact, very few of us take tea without sugar. So I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to congratulate uh, uh, those who are champions for tea, and I want to recruit them to be champions for sugar too, because tea and sugar go together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Honorable Senators, unfortunately, we must bring this to a close. Was, uh, I told you we, don't, we, are, we, are, we have a school set of time. Is that okay? L later you'll win the committee of the hall. Next order. Move. Move to, re to reply. I have, I have written so much. I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank all the senators who have uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, it, it, it is apparent that uh, uh, all the senators are overwhelming, overwhelmingly supporting uh, this bill. Mr. Speaker, as we go to voting for the bill, I wish, to, uh, I wish to appeal, because we are going to pass this bill today, I wish to appeal to the Ministry of Agriculture, as they constitute the board, the tea board, that they must learn from history that the, 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 the coffee board of Kenya, the, the coffee board of Kenya is the one that actually, virtually cured coffee in this country. How, Mr. Speaker, that the members of that board were also players in the coffee sector. They were traders in the sector. So we want, Mr. Speaker, and I am appealing that whoever is appointed, whoever we appoint uh, in, in this board, in the tea board, they must be persons above reproach. They must be persons who are passionate about, uh, you know, about uh, tea, and who will take the concerns of the tea farmers uh, uh, at heart. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I also wish to address the various uh, 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 stakeholders who feel, who feel that they have the, the or they are unsatisfied with the bill. Mr. Speaker, I know that you have received several petitions so far. And I am hoping, Mr. Speaker, that you assign those positions to relevant committees. The ones that will come to my committee, I can assure the House that you will deal with them uh, expeditiously. And Mr. Speaker, I am therefore appealing to all those stakeholders who feel affected by this bill and who are currently in the courts of law I want to ask them to trust that this House can deal with their concerns, can deal with their concerns, and expeditiously. Mr. Speaker, I do hope that all the petitions which lie on your desk, that you will allocate them uh, even during this recess, uh, and we'll be able to look at them and look at the concerns of various stakeholders. And there are many, Mr. Speaker, 
and they are right. And they, if they feel that they need to be properly uh, accommodated in the bill, I think, Mr. Speaker, we should accommodate them one way or another. Mr. Speaker, yes, uh, in furtherance of uh, 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 the tea uh, sector, we cannot ignore that the county government, agriculture being a devolved function, we have to work jointly with the county government. Mr. Speaker, my committee had a session with the Council of Governors, with the, with the, with the, with the Agriculture Committee of the Council of Governors. And we did meet in Mombasa, Mr. Speaker, and we raised several issues with the Council of Governors. And they also raised several issues which we intend at some later point to bring to this House. Mr. Speaker, I did read somewhere Mr. Speaker, I didn't read somewhere in one of uh, these papers that my committee was meeting with the Council of Governors to discuss this bill. There cannot be anything further from the truth. Mr. Speaker, this House, the House, the Senate of the Republic of Kenya, its first priority is to safeguard uh, 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 devolution. And we are going to be meeting and we are going to be meeting with the council of governors. Order, order, members. Order, order. Senator Pareno, what's your... Speaker, I was just going to say that you intervened because we can hardly hear the response from our honorable yeah. senator. There are also too many people on their feet. Please. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Speaker, indeed I, am, I want to conclude and also inform the people who may have been misguided that this house, the committee of this house, cannot and should not meet with the Council of Governors, that they are thoroughly misguided. That happens to be our business. And Mr. Speaker, in furtherance of agriculture in this republic, my committee and the Council of Governors will be meeting quarterly to check on the progress of, uh, of uh, agriculture in this republic. So let people be informed that wherever you see us with the Council of Governors, we are not discussing personalities. Mr. Speaker, in my time, in my long time in, a, in politics, I do not discuss personalities. I have no interest in personalities. My business is the business of the Republic. And with those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, once again, I want to thank all the senators for your beautiful contributions. And I really do hope that soon we will be looking at where we can amend other amendments after we have passed this bill. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, order senators. Order senators, take your seat. Pass one to standing order number 79. This is not a matter affecting counties, so voting will be by acclamation, and I will therefore proceed and put the question with the National Assembly amendments to the T bill. Senate Bill Number 36 of 2018 be now considered. May, uh, may as many of that opinion say aye. aye. May have, uh, any of a counter view say nay. The ayes have it. <laughs> Next order. Order Number Four, Committee of the Whole, consideration of the National Assembly amendments to the T-Bill, Senate Bill number 36 of 2018. Is it one vote? Is it one vote? Is it one vote? Is it one vote? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll use the one thing. Yeah. 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 Y
No one. One. Yeah, we will only vote in committee. Okay. Yeah. But petition is a committee. Yeah. So we are now doing the, this one. Eh? Um, Honorable Senators, we are now going to do consideration of the National Assembly amendments to the T bill, Senate bills number 36 of 2018. National Assembly amendment to clause 2. I propose the question that the National Assembly amendment to close two of the bill be approved. Chairperson Standing Committee on Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries. There's no, there's no amendment. There's no amendment. There's no amendment. I put the question that the National Assembly amendment to close two of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 5. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 5 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 5 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 6. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 6 of the bill be approved. Order Senators, we are considering the amendments. <laughs> I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 6 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 6 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 7. I propose the question that the National, Amend uh, National Assembly Amendment to Clause 7 of, of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 7 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 8. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 8 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 8 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 8. Is it eight or nine? Nine. nine. Sorry, nine. nine. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 9 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 9 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 13. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 13 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 13 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 15. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 15 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Asse Assembly Amendment to Clause 15 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 16. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 16 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 16 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National, National Assembly Amendment to Clause 19. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 19 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 19 of the bill is, be approved. Division at the end. New Insertion of new part three on the regulatory provisions incorporating news clauses 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, up to 24X. 
I propose a question that they delete the deletion of part three incorporating clauses 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Insertion of new part three incorporating new clauses 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 to 24 X be approved. I put the question that the deletion of part three incorporating clauses 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, and inserting of new part, th part three incorporating new Closes 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 to 24X be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new part 3A on appointment of crop inspectors incorporating clauses 24Y to 24ZB. I propose the question that the insertion of the new part 3A incorporating clauses. What is that? Clauses 24Y to 24ZB be approved. I put the question that the insertion of new part 3A including clauses 24Y to 24ZB be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new part 3B on the establishment of T levy and T fund. I propose the question that the insertion of new part 3B incorporating clauses 24ZC to 24ZD be approved. I put the question that the insertion of new part 3B incorporating clauses 24ZC to 24ZD be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new part 3C on the establishment of the T Research Foundation incorporating clauses 24ZE to 24ZF. I propose the question that insertion of new part 3C incorporating clauses 24ZE to 24ZF be approved. I put the question that the insertion of the new part 3C incorporating clauses 24ZE 24 to 24ZF be approved division at the end. National Assembly amendment to clause 25. I propose the question that the National Assembly amendment to clauses 25 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly amendment to clause 25 of the bill be approved division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 26. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 26 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 26 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 28. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 28 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 28 be of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new part. 4A on complaints and investigation procedure, incorporating clauses 29A to 29G. I propose the question that the insertion of the new part 4A, incorporating new clauses 29A to 29G, be approved. I put the question that the insertion of the new part 4A, incorporating clauses new clauses 29A to 29G, be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly amendment to clause 30. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 30 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 30 be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 31. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 31 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 31 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 32. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 32 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 32 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 33. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 33 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 33 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 34. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 34 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 34 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 35. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 35 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 35 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 36. I propose the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 36 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly Amendment to Clause 36 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly Amendment to Clause 38. I propose the question that National Assembly Amendment to Clause 38 of the bill be approved. 
I put the question that the National Assembly amendment to close 38 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly amendment to close 39. I propose the question that the National Assembly amendment to close 39 of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly amendment to close 39 of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new clause 32A. I propose the question that the insertion of new clause 32A of the bill be approved. I put the question that the insertion of new clause 32A of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new clause 32B. I propose the question that the insertion of new clause 32B of the bill be approved. I put the question that the insertion of new clause 32B of the bill be approved. Division at the end. National Assembly amendment to the schedule. I propose a question that the National Assem Assembly amendment to the schedule of the bill be approved. I put the question that the National Assembly amendment to the schedule of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new second schedule. I propose a question that the insertion of the new second schedule of the bill be approved. I put the question that the insertion of the new second schedule of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Insertion of new third schedule. I propose the question that the insertion of new third schedule of the bill be approved. I put the question that the insertion of the new third schedule of the bill be approved. Division at the end. Honorable Senators, we shall then, uh, having concluded with the amendments, we are supposed to proceed for division. No. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you for that good work you have done. Eh? But Madam Chair, I'm seeking the two directions from you: that uh, we ring the bell for about uh, five minutes. I also take this opportunity to urge my colleagues who are uh, following this proceeding virtually to now be prepared to commence voting, to log in. And yeah, if, if there is any senator out there watching us, because I know there are many colleagues uh, uh, who need now to come in and start uh, voting, because this is now the very last uh, stage. And finally, give us directions that uh, it is voting by delegation. Yes, Senator Mutula. Okay, I thought it was magic that I press one and the other one comes on. Chair, one, I agree with Senator Kangata, Weep, that uh, you ring the bell for five minutes. The, the other concern I have is there should be direction on the voting. Are we voting close by close, or we are taking one vote for the entire? That clarification is important. We will take uh, one vote for all the amendments, but uh, for now we can ring the bell for five minutes. Five minutes, thank you. <laughs> Switch of this. Switch of this mic.
Senator Linturi Franklin Mithika, Meru County. I vote yes. Senator Loy Tip Tip Anwar, Lamu County. Senator Mazayo Stewart Mwashiru, Kilifi County. Proceed. Senator Mahmoud Mohamed Malim, Mandera County. Senator Malala Cleophas Wahungu, Kakamega County. Senator Mbito Michael Malinga, Transoya County. I thought he was on Zoom, virtual. We cannot hear you, Senator Mbito. I vote yes. Thank you. Yes, we have heard you. Senator Mbogo George Ochilo Ayako, Migori County. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I always vote yes. <laughs> Senator Mogeni Eric Okono, Nyamira County. Uh, Madam Speaker, Nyamira votes yes. Senator Moi Gideon Kipsielei Toet, Baringo County. Is not there. Let us proceed. Senator Mpaye Philip Salau, Kajiado County. Senator, Senator, are you there? On behalf of Kajiado, are you there? Do you have a delegated vote? Can we go back to her once? Uh, we Senator we'll Mpaye, Philip Salau, Kajiado we'll County. Okay, we have heard you, Senator, Senator. Are you on? Okay, thank you. We've heard you. Senator Murkomen, Omunesimas Kipchumba, Elgeo Marakwet County. Madam Speaker, Elgeo Marakwet County votes yes. Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr., Makueni County. Senator Mutula, give uh, Senator Mutula the mic. It's the only place where you press one and the other one comes on. Mark when he votes, yes. <laughs> Senator Mwangi, Paul Gidiomi, Nyandarua County. Madam Speaker, Madam Chair, I vote yes. Thank you, we have heard you. Senator Mwaruma Jones Mwashushe, Taita Taveta County. Senator Mwaruma, can we see your face? <laughs> we have not heard you. We can't hear you.
Who is not the mics? Give him a mic. They are doing it. They are doing it. Yes, control. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, I vote yes. Give the mic. Senator Orengo James, Sierra County. Madam Chair, I vote yes. Senator Ouda Ouda Frederick Otieno, Kisumu County. Heavy hat, yes. <laughs> Senate, Senator Pogisho Samuel Losron, West Pocot County. Uh, Madam Chair, West Pocot votes yes. Senator Sakaja Johnson Arthur, Nairobi County. Madam Chair, the biggest consumer of tea, Nairobi, votes yes. Senator Wako Sitswila Amos, Busia County. The county of Busia delegation votes yes. Senator Wambua Enoch Kio, Kitui County. Can you give Senator Wambua the mic? Madam Chair, because the people of Kitui expect that the entire Senate will support the Ndengo Bill, I vote yes. Senator Wario Golich Juma, Tana River County. Senator Wario Golich Juma, Tana River County. Senator Wetangula Moses Masika, Bungoma County. A Bungoma delegation votes yes. We, we, we were to recall uh, Senator Fatuma Dulo if she's still online. Is Senator Fatuma Dulo still uh, voting by? Senator Adam Dulo Fatuma is Yolo County. Okay, so let's proceed to count the vote. Tell us, are you ready with your returns? Senator Omanga, Senator Naomi Shionga.
Thank you. Tell us for our job well done. the results of this. Uh, um, Honorable Senators, the results of a division, the ayes 33, the noes, the nays, zero, abstention, zero. The ayes have it. Uh, Honorable Senators, the mover may now report. Mover. Mover. No, the mover is Aaron. Sorry, sorry, senators. The mover is uh, Senator Aaron. Chariot. Oh. He's the owner of the bill. Honorable Chairperson, I beg to move that the committee do report to the Senate its consideration of the National Assembly Amendment to the TBU, Senate Bill Number 36 of 2018, and its approval thereof with, eh, without, amend, without amendments. A document. I will put the question, which is that the committee do report to the House its consideration of the National Assembly amendments to the T-Bill, Senate Bills number 36 of 2018, and its approval thereof. As many of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of the contrary opinion say nay. The ayes have it. We now order that the doors be opened and the bars be withdrawn. Uh, honorable members, uh, the chairperson will now report. Chairperson? Honorable Speaker, I beg to report progress at the that the Committee of the Whole ha has considered the National Assembly amendments to the T-Bill, Senate Bills number 36 of 2018, and seek leave to sit again tomorrow.
okay. Sorry, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole has considered the National Assembly amendments to the T Bill, Senate Bill Number 36 of 2018, and its approval thereof, without, without, without amendments. Thank you, Mover. Honorable, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the House do agree with the committee on the same report. Uh, Honorable Senators, I will now propose the question, which is that the House do agree with the committee in the said report. Senator Juriot, Aaron. Mike, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this uh, chance that I had requested earlier on. Uh, I want to take this time to appreciate uh, our colleagues who've uh, acceded to our request, first of all, to break. Uh, uh, Senator Geriot. Yes, Madam Speaker. In addition to you are wanting to say something, yeah. you are also seconding the motion from the mover. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do that. Okay, good. So, Madam Speaker, I was saying I really appreciate uh, my colleagues uh, took time this afternoon out of their busy uh, break to come and transact business on behalf of the millions of Kenyans who depend on tea farming as a business. I appreciate each and every one of you because uh, this has been two years' journey that we have done as a house. It has nothing to do with me as a person, but everything to do with Senate as a house. The fact that we listened to the motion, uh, that set up the ad hoc committee. We went around the country. I think we visited almost 13 counties listening to the views of the farmers and they pleaded with us. And there's nothing more difficult than when citizens of a republic cry to you, cry out to you and you're a leader. Because in short, what they're saying is that if I was in your position, perhaps I would have thought of a solution. And it is out of that realization that we came back together as a committee, worked on the bill, uh, rolled it out on the floor of this house, completed it uh, last year, has gone through the motions of parliament, been caught in between all the uh, tribulations that many of the bills that come from the Senate uh, do face, uh, Madam Speaker, with regards to Article 110, 114. Uh, but we appreciate each and every parliamentary officer because I want to uh, make a special mention also because of their uh, very uh, dedicated contribution to the work that they've done for us to ensure that this bill sees the light of the day. We appreciate also our colleagues. It's not every other day that as Senate, we appreciate the work of the National Assembly. On many occasions, we don't have very kind words uh, for them because they are aggressors most of the time in the disputes that we have between the, uh, both houses. But today, uh, like Senator, our leader, Senator uh, James Orengo said, it's one of those rare occasions where they have agreed to the work that Senate has done. And therefore, it will be uh, not so fair on our part if we do not appreciate the National Assembly. Of course, they went on to add on uh, <clears throat> so much uh, contribution, in, including almost uh, other 34 clauses from Ministry of Agriculture on things that they considered that as a house we had not uh, factored in in our contributions. And for us as both houses of parliament to agree with them is a, is a big uh, milestone. I appreciate uh, the party leaders too because we must be sincere. Uh, in the course of uh, the weekend, there are many stories that were flying around about the things that people are saying. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the contribution of each and every one of them in ensuring that as a house uh, we pass this bill, we, uh, we conclude it, and give to the tea farmers of this country a fantastic Christmas. Mr. Speaker, I can confidently now go back to Kericho and tell them that my stay uh, in this house, just like the many of the colleagues who come from tea 
uh, uh, T. Groen County, Senator Omogeni can go back, Senator Professor Ongeri and many of my colleagues on this other side, they'll go back to their home counties and say, as a Senate, we have done our work. Now it falls upon government. There are many things. I did a simple calculation for Senator Professor Ongeri as I conclude, uh, Madam Senator. Senator Ongeri is a big, big-time tea farmer. He does almost close to 200,000 uh, kgs of tea every year. And I was telling him, just on two closes alone, he's making close to 200,000 shillings. Because on the close number one, that reduces the auction percentage price from 1.5% to 0.75. Uh, that saves him close to 100,000 uh, 100, Kenya shillings out of his earning. The second one on management fee, that moves it from 2.5% as currently is to a maximum of 1.5%. That gives him another 200,000, Madam Speaker. And the same can be said to so many other farmers. So do not holistically, when you read about, this is not a simple act that you have done as a house. At the end of this current uh, uh, agriculture year, if we may call it, we call it an agricultural cycle in the tea uh, food chain because it's the year that you declare the tea uh, bonus. Many farmers will have thousands more of shillings back to their pockets courtesy of the work that this house has done. So I appreciate, Madam Speaker, I know we are pressed for time. We would have said many things, but on behalf of uh, many of the, our colleagues who represent uh, tea farmers in this house, and overall as an institution, I do pass my appreciation, Madam Speaker. And with those many remarks, I do second, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Geriot. I know you have persuaded a few to be tea farmers. Honorable Senators, I see three people wanting to speak, but I also wanted to inform you that I'm going to propose, before I propose, I'm going to propose, I wanted to inform you that we needed about an hour to you, to you, yeah. I, I know I'm going to propose the question. Um, I just want to warn members that we don't have to load this. Thank you. So I can see three of you who had put your yes, the card have also withdrawn. have withdrawn. Thank you very much. Now I can put the question, which is that the House do agree with the committee in the said report? Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary say nay? The ayes have it. Uh, thank you, honorable senators. We now go to the very important session of eulogizing our dear colleague, Senator Kabaka of Machakos. I want to do a limitation of three minutes so that all of us can have an opportunity to speak. And the first person to... Oops, oops, oops. Thank you. Next order. <laughs> Sorry, that was okay because this was a report from the committee. So we didn't, we didn't need that. And remember, uh, eulogizing our brother was not part of the order paper, but it was out of uh, communication from the speaker. So we will continue with that. Uh, the first person to come forward is Senator Wambua Enokio who has represented us very ably in the Committee of the Family. Senator Wambua. Point of order from uh, Senator Watangula. Speaker, there are a few of us who were accorded an opportunity by the speaker to brief, to speak very briefly about our colleague on the day that we had the impeachment proceedings. Are we going to be allowed to have a second bite at the cherry? Or we are, <laughs> or, or we are taken as having spoken? Uh, uh, Senator Watangula, you know very much it is the eye of the speaker. That will deal with the, yes, it's the eye of the speaker. So don't report. 
<laughs> okay. or on others. The only reason I was asking is because we agreed that the proceedings will be taken from the Hansard and taken to the family. So if oh, what yes. I said on Thursday will oh, be extracted yeah. and be part of it, then I don't need to take a, a chance that another senator can You are very right, Senator. You are very right, senator. You are very right. I, I, didn't, I missed that one. So I think that is very okay. If you had spoken, please, you don't have to speak again because already that has been uh, extracted. Uh, this one should be extracted tomorrow morning. I mean, this evening on time for, for it to be taken. So, Senator Wambua. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving this, me this opportunity to yellowize my friend, my colleague, Senator Kabaka. Madam Speaker, I will be pleading with you that um, and I'm very sensitive about time, that, that you can just give me two additional minutes, because in eulogizing, I'm also going to give me, giving a brief of what we are doing. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to really grieve my friend, my brother, uh, Senator Kabaka, the Senator Machakos, who left us on the 11th day of December 2020, Madam Speaker. And for the record, uh, Senator Kabaka left us at 8.45 a.m. on December 11th, 2020, and not earlier, as had been circulated by a section of social media. Madam Speaker, I want to say that all of us have lost a dear friend and a great leader in this nation. A man who was very passionate about the things that he did and especially very passionate about the plight of the poor and the downtrodden in society. So speaker, I remember that the last conversation that I had with Senator Kabaka was about people in his county who, whose land had been taken for the construction of a mega dam and they had not been compensated. And when he tried to push for their compensation and it was not forthcoming, he took the initiative as an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and went to court to stop the project until his people are compensated. When I spoke to him, he said, my brother, as he used to call me, I want to go with you to see those people and because I know who you are, that's him talking to me, because I know who you are, you would definitely cry to see the kind of people whose land has been taken and they have not been compensated. That speaks volumes about the kind of person that Kabaka was, Senator. Madam Speaker, in my interaction with Senator Kabaka, and I say this with humility to the people of Machakos County, in fact, it has reached a point, Madam Speaker, and I was saying to myself, Counting the number of times that Senator Kabaka has gone with me to Kitui for functions, I am convinced that in fact he could have spent a lot more time in functions in Kitui than in Machakos. When I lost my auntie in May of this year, it is Senator Kabaka who called me and said, you and I should not bother other people. You and I will share the cost of the burial. We will buy the coffin and pay for transportation to go and rest your auntie. And he was there. He drove himself to my home for the burial of my auntie. Madam Speaker, time will not allow me to say the many things that I did with my brother, the Senator Kabaka. But one thing stands out, Madam Speaker. Earlier in the year, I mentioned to him that um, I was thinking of enrolling for a master's degree in theology. And, and Kabaka said, 
on the day that you're going to be picking the forms to fill for enrollment, I'll go with you so that we pursue the course together. That is how close Senator Kabaka was to me, Madam Speaker. And I want to say that God gave us Senator Kabaka and God has called Senator Kabaka to himself. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Madam Speaker, to be remembered, as I conclude my eulogy, it will be remembered how Senator Kabaka stood with Kitui and Makweni and all the counties that were supposed to be losing money in the revenue sharing uh, formula. And I remember how Senator Kabaka was lobbied by so many people that he should abandon the course because Makweni, because Machakos was gaining money. And in my presence, he told the people that were lobbying him, for as long as my people in Kitui and my people in Makweni are losing money, I will not accept to gain at the expense of my brothers and sisters. Madam Speaker, I want to say, may the soul of our brother, our friend, Senator Kabaka, rest in turn of peace. And Madam Speaker, with your permission, I want to inform the House that tomorrow is the day that we are going to Mikuyu in Masinga for the final resting of our brother and our colleague. We are leaving the city at 7 in the morning, and I want to thank the Secretariat for the great support that you have given the family and the organizing committee to make sure that we give our brother, our friend, a befitting sent off. Transport has been arranged for senators that are going to be meeting here in Parliament at 6.30 in the morning. We have agreed with the Secretariat that because the proceedings of Parliament and the happenings around Parliament are determined by our own standing orders and by tradition, through Kabaka, Madam Speaker, we have agreed as a committee that was appointed by the Speaker to coordinate the barrio that we will begin a new tradition in this Parliament. That when a member passes on, it is only fitting that as they depart, they have an opportunity to be brought to the Parliament for colleagues who will not be able to go to the morgue and to the barrio to just pay their last respects. So we have agreed that tomorrow we will pass by here with the body of our friend for people to just pay their respects and to, to meet and join with other colleagues. And we leave Parliament as a convoy. We go to Masinga through Vika Road. We expect to be in Masinga at around 10 a.m. when the program starts and run through the program until around 4 p.m when we intend to bury our friend. So this is just a call to our, our, our colleagues to kindly just make that sacrifice tomorrow. Wake up that early in the morning. At 6 that in the morning, please let's all be here. A few of us, uh, those who are in the committee, will go to Lee, we'll bring the body, and then we will join our colleagues here, and together we'll go to bury our brother, our friend. Madam Speaker, thank you for giving me the time to your as my friend and to brief members on what we are doing. I thank you, Madam, Madam Speaker. May the soul of my brother, Senator Bonface Mutinda Kabaka, rest in God's eternal peace. Amen. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Murkomen Onesmas Kipchumba. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, my our colleague, Senator Boniface Mutinda Kabaka, was my senior in the legal profession. He is a man whom, if you met in these chambers or outside here, you would mistake his simplicity for weakness. You would mistake his simplicity for... You would never actually tell that it's a man 
with immense knowledge and education. I think Boniface Kabaka had more than four degrees. I think, yeah, he was pursuing the sixth. He had five. And he was pursuing a PhD. The, if there is a senator who engaged us intellectually in the Senate social media group, was Senator Kabaka. I enjoyed their conversation, especially late nights, because I am a late night sleeper. And Madam Speaker, him and Senator Achilo Ayako uh, have always entertained us with very witty comments. Senator Kabaka, in any conversation you had with him, you realized that he was deep, both intellectually in the legal profession, in terms of understanding of law, but life and philosophy of life. His most memorable moment, I think, in this house, and which is his legacy, is his turn with those counties that were meant to lose money in the discussion on division of revenue. And when we were having that debate, uh, Senator Kabaka was part of Team Kenya, and Senator Sakaja, who was uh, part of our leadership, will bear witness. We thought, most of us thought that he was the last person to stand firm because of the pressure that was there insofar as the decision to stand with the counties that were losing or concern. But he stood very firm, not to mention that Senator Mutola and Senator Wambua uh, together with him went to pray with a bishop. And when, Kab <laughs> when, when Mutula and Wambua came back, they told us, don't worry about Kabaka. He did not just confess to us, he also confessed to God that he's going to stand firm with Team Kenya. And he stood firm. And I think it's, it's very sad that this house lost such a gentleman. It is very sad that this country lost somebody at that level. In fact, he was the kind of person I used to joke with him that if his political career ends soon, he should consider a career in the bench so that he can write very good judgments based on the very uh, immense knowledge he had. We will miss him. Uh, we will miss our colleague here, but we want to tell the people of Machakos to take heart. You are co uh, your senator did wonderful things in defending you outside there and inside this chamber, and that God will guide you also to get another leader who will follow in the footsteps of Senator Boniface Kabaka Mutinda. With those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I'd like to wish his family the very best and God's grace. At Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to join um, colleagues in offering my condolences to the people of uh, Machakos, um, my neighboring county, as well as the family of our late uh, departed colleague. Madam Speaker, on the 7th um, of November, if I got the date right, I joined Senator Mutula and Senator Wambua at uh, Nairobi Hospital um, to visit our friend. We were supposed to wake up from surgery um, that evening. And um, I was not allowed to see him, but uh, we sat with the family, and uh, I think the wife and one of the sons was next to us. And we were looking forward that he would come to a few hours later or a few days later. Um, Madam Speaker, on the 11th, Senator Mutula called me and told me that, I had, in fact, he put it very interestingly. He said, uh, Rebel in chief <laughs> of Team Kenya, you have lost a general. And uh, I understood what he meant. And that was very, very sad, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Senator Kabaka was very jovial, very engaging, extremely deep, as Senator Mutula, as, uh, Senator Murkomen said. And he was a friend. I remember at the time I addressed an issue about him and Senator Mutula and Senator Murkomen for going to court to support the then governor of Nairobi. Senate, uh, Governor Sonko, and I felt, you know, you guys should have at least told me, you know, uh, what you're doing. Um, he took time to come to my office and explain what was going on. And we became very close during the stalemate of revenue because he was, he was in our team. We, we had thought he'd be a weak link, <laughs> but he was strong. And Madam Speaker, that moment was not an easy moment for any of us, especially those whose counties had been gaining, but who chose to stood, stand with the others. And uh, every time he would just call me to reassure me that we were moving in one direction. Um, and we did many things even outside parliament, many of which, um, Madam Speaker, um, him and I would, would, would stay with the memory. Um, Madam Speaker, the people of Machakos have lost an honest man, 
a selfless man. If you look at what he was doing at home and even the school he was putting up, um, his love for the community and his love for the truth, um, they have lost a great, great senator. And I hope that, Madam Speaker, um, his memory will live on. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm reminded of the words of Khalil Gibran in The Prophet when he speaks about death and he says, your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then you shall truly dance. Senator Kabaka, go well and dance on. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Ongeri, Samson, Kagengo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is with a very heavy heart that I mourn the passing on of a great senator, a great debater, a very intellectual academic giant, and a person who was endowed with tremendous ability to interpret the social circumstances and the economic welfare of his people. And indeed, those of us who witness his ability to debate in this house, he was able to in a very brief manner, uh, summarize the events of the, of the debate, and he was able to also give a way forward on how that debate should go. And more so, his acumen and knowledge in the legal profession gave him a, a very tall uh, position in that uh, professional uh, docket, and was a man who was imbued with a lot of uh, experiences that he will be able to bring on the table. Of the parliamentary debate, he was a man who is in social engagement, was very mindful of other people's welfare. And I know that every time any one of us approached him on something that had to do with either somebody who has died somewhere, he was a very ready hand in giving support to that uh, person and also in giving support to the projects that needed to be done. Therefore, we have lost a man who was, in fact, in terms of uh, his contribution to this nation, that he has contributed more than many others who would have done in his place if they had been given that time span that he has been with us in this level. So in sympathy with the family, we want to condole with the family and the people of Machakos for losing a very able a senator, and hopefully, God willing, that they may be able to find somebody to step into shoes. To the family, uh, we pass our con condolences to them, and particularly the close family. And I know at this time of grief, many people may doubt what there is, but for those of us who are glued up in the Bible, we know that there is hope beyond death. And death is just a shadow, and therefore death only comes at a time, and people, is, according to the biblical uh, uh, enunciation, death can only come at a time like this. And we've seen a lot of people die. But at the end of the day, we should all believe and trust that eventually when the Lord Master comes in that glorious day, uh, as recorded in Revelation 21, uh, uh, verse 1 to 3, that when the Jerusalem city descends on this earth, we shall all be presently be there singing a new song, which even the angels of heaven will not be able to read and understand the tonics of that song, except the ones who have triumphed on this world. And I think it will be one of them. I thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to utilize one of our best and very uh, consummate uh, debate in this house. I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Grinyaga, Ephraim, Maina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
I started to remember our colleague, Senator Kabaka, and I want to say is that the Senator Kabaka always came out as a very humorous person who seemed to wish well to everybody. Uh, we have heard it, and it's true. It was not just a casual thing for him to say, even if he's get, uh, uh, Machakos is getting money, he cannot agree with the money if his brothers and sisters in Makueni, in Kitui, are not getting. And uh, m m Madam Speaker, I remember one time jokingly asking him why that had to be, but he was so convinced and convicted. And I want to tell his people that they had a selfless leader and a man who actually seemed and wished no harm. I remember Senator Kabaka here, when we were approving the head of the police, the IG of police, he stood firmly at the, the toward this house, the man was his classmate, and he appealed to us to support him. And I remember rising and saying, when one of our colleagues has given those kind of credentials, there must be something true about the person we are approving. And we supported the present IG of police. Therefore, he was a man that stood with what he believed and he is a man who stood for the interest of his people. And Madam Speaker, I want to make a final, two final appeal to the media. Let them be wary, let them be considerate of families when, an, when something like this happens, not to bring emotional issues that are neither here nor there. Somebody passes on and that is it. Don't bring other stories you know, that seem maybe emotionally amusing. The other one, Madam Speaker, is that Senator Kabaka has left a family. And I was wondering, and I've been wondering, that when we are in this house, what is it that we can do to ensure at least we give reply to that kind of a family? It's a family with children. And we will lay Kabaka tomorrow, you know. But I would say, I wish we had a system in this house or in parliament where with something would be done to see that the life of and the continuity of this, the children and his family are, are really is not affected as much. But in the end of the day, let us say God knows best what he did and God knows best what he's doing. Let us uh, uh, pray and appreciate God's life he has given our brother and we say, may the wish of God be done, and may God bless this family and take of it, care of it more than anybody can take care of it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Senator Nderit, no, Senator Chiriot Aaron Kirui. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this chance. Madam Speaker, I want to take this very opportunity on behalf of the people of Kericho uh, and many Kenyans uh, who may not get a chance to share in the grief that we share in this format and manner to pass my, uh, the con their condolences uh, to the people of Machakos, the family of Senator Kabaka, our colleague, following his uh, untimely demise. Madam Speaker, I agree with many of our colleagues who have spoken on the great attributes that this colleague of ours uh, uh, had and was blessed with. I agree with those of my colleagues who agree that Senator Kabaka was indeed a very witty man and had his, uh, was blessed in a way of simplifying the very complex issues uh, sometimes. Madam Speaker, I had on one occasion the chance of traveling with our colleague Senator Kabaka to uh, Colombo in uh, Sri Lanka and we spent uh, a whole two weeks uh, together with other colleagues and we happened to have been uh, staying at the same hotel. Therefore, many evenings after the conference, we'd spend time together uh, walking around and discussing uh, many issues. At that point, I got to learn of the man that uh, Senator uh, Kabaka is. 
a great friend, a person who interacted deeply and wanted to know more about people. Uh, a distinguishing factor about him that I do recall up to date is that on many occasions when we travel as a parliament and in our delegations, uh, Madam Speaker, you'll hardly find uh, senators or member of, members of parliament engaging uh, the staffers that we travel with. But curiously, it's now that we are at, uh, giving our tributes to Senator Kabaka that I've just recalled that actually on most of our evenings, we'd hung out with the parliamentary staff that we traveled with. That was Senator Kabaka uh, for you. He had a way of not uh, distinguishing between the high and those that are considered not to be of their class or rank. And he would interact freely with them, enjoy uh, good times and share with them. But this is a way of life, uh, Madam Speaker. As the Bible tells us that it is given for man uh, to be born and a time to die also come. It has come for uh, our colleague, uh, Senator Kabaka. We do mourn him. Tomorrow we shall all uh, troop to his home village to bid him farewell and to give our condolences to the people of Machakos for losing such a distinguished leader. But of course, one of the greatest contributions that we will never forget is what he did uh, for us when we uh, caucused together alongside in Team Kenya, Madam Speaker, earlier on uh, this year. And the many sessions and the meetings that we had together, that was a issue that not many would have handled. You would imagine that uh, coming from a county that was gaining and having your governor, who is fairly loud, uh, get on all media stations and tell residents of your county how you are a useless person, uh, that your county is supposed to be uh, gaining certain amounts of money, but because of your greed or because of other considerations, you are not uh, doing it. But out of, because he was firmly convinced in the course and the path that you had taken, he believed in a better Kenya, as many of us who served uh, together with, uh, who caucused during that particular time do, he stood firm. And for those great attributes, I'll forever cherish the mo moments and the memories that we had with these uh, great colleagues of ours. Finally, Madam Speaker, I do conclude by reminding uh, many of our uh, mainstream media not to behave like tabloids. The very unfortunate things that they said about Senator uh, Kabaka. I called up one of the editors and told them, by the way, uh, we politicians have families too. Some of these things that you're writing about uh, people are completely unnecessary. And it's not fair that they will come a time that people will say also certain things about it. So it's about media ethics, Madam Speaker, that I hope can be uh, respected and restored by the Media uh, Council of Kenya. With those uh, many remarks, Madam Speaker, I say rest in peace, our good friend and colleague, Senator Kabaka. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you. Let's try, even though we say three minutes, try to use two so that all members will get a chance because I still have more than 15. Uh, Senator Pareno, Judith Ramaita. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to mourn a friend and a colleague. I knew Senator Kabaka before we came into the Senate. I had known him for quite some time. As a colleague in the party, Senator Kabaka, way back, was an ODM party member, very strong member who came out strongly and... Um, had uh, an encounter with him during those days as a member of the party before he ran on the current uh, ticket that he used to come to the Senate. Senator Kabaka is a colleague in the profession as a lawyer. My path and his crisscrossed as we ran around in the courtrooms to defend our clients. Very committed uh, lawyer. And finally, Senator Kabaka became uh, a colleague in the Senate. And um, I admired him and his, his practice of the law. And Madam Speaker, the last um, encounter I had with him just before he, uh, he, he, we lost him is a visit he made to my home in Mashuru in Kajado County. He came in with Senator, uh, of, Senator of Kitui, Senator Wambua, and I hosted them. And Madam Speaker, he had plans. He had a life uh, uh, that, uh, that was so vibrant. And he had asked me to, to help him get... Um, a breed we called the Doper sheep. And uh, when he came home, he was able to identify a few that he had hoped he was going to purchase. He also had, had uh, wanted to do a breed of uh, animals that we call simintals, and he also wanted to buy some from us. It was not to be. We had those plans, but I guess uh, God had bigger plans for him, and uh, all we can do is mourn him. We miss him. 
He was a darling to many of us here in the Senate and as a friend. And I pray that he becomes a darling even to the angels in heaven. Rest in peace, colleague and friend, Senator Kabaka. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Nderitu, John Kinyo. Uh, Santi sana, bispika kwa kunuipa furusa hii. Uh, kwanza, kwanza kabisa, ningependa kusema ya kwamba, nataka kutuma lisara zangu za rambirambi za familia yangu na watu watu wa laikipia kwa familia ya mwanda zake Senata Kabaka pamoja na watu wa Machakos. Na jambo mbalo na mkumbuka Senata Kabaka, alikuwa mtu mkarimu sana na kumbuka kwa wakati ndugu yetu mwanda zake Ben, Senata wa kutoka Migori alipo alipo tuacha seneta kabaka alitolea kasema ya kwamba atawa, atalipa karo kwa wanafunzi wa mwenda zake uh, ben na nakumbuka aliandika aliandika ile hundi ya kusaidia kwa hivyo ukarimu wake ulitokea ulitogeza vizuri sana na mkumbuka kama msomi ni tulisafiri naye katika nchi ya Australia na tulipokuwa huko aliniambia kitu ambacho ni kizuri zaidi ni kwenda katika maktaba na akaweza kununua vitabu vya vya wanasheria. Kwa hivyo ni mtu alijulikana sana kwa mambo ya masomo. Jambo lingine ambalo namjua ni kwamba alikuwa mtu study sana katika mambo ya midadala hapa katika seneti. Kwa hivyo tutamkosa sana. Jambo lingine ambalo jitokeza sana kwa ndugu yangu Kabaka ni ya kwamba yeye mwenyewe alikuwa na msimamo thabiti. Mimi mwenyewe nili, nilikuwa nikimrai awache kusimama na timu Kenya aje katika timu yetu ya one man one vote one shilling kwa sababu yeye tayari kama kaunti yake ilikuwa ime, ime, ime hela zimeongezeka kwenda kaunti yake lakini yeye alisimama kidete akasema haezi akawaacha ndugu zake wa kutoka makweni ndugu zake wa kutoka kitui kwa hivyo ni mtu ambaye akiwa na akiwa, akisema jambo lile ambalo anasimamia alisimamia kwa ustadi sana mimi ni rafiki yangu na ni rafiki ya wengi hapa tutamkosa sana Kwa hivyo vile ambavyo tunaweza tukasema safili salama ndugu yangu seneta Kabaka Minority leader Senator James Sorengo uh, I thank you, Madam Speaker, also for getting a chance to eulogize uh, and send condolences to the family of our colleague, Senator Boniface Mutinde Kabaka. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, if ever there was a jovial man in this Senate, if there was ever a kind man in this Senate, Senator Kabaka was such a person. I am aware of many uh, verses in the Bible Old Testament and New Testament that compares life uh, to, to, to the grass that withers away and to the flower that fades away. And you find those words in many uh, parts of the scripture in both uh, uh, books of the, of the Bible. And uh, when I remember how fast Senator Kabaka has left us, then I only hope that uh, as the word of the Lord lasts and stays uh, forever. His life will remain with us and with generations to come because what we place in record regarding uh, uh, Senator Kabaka will be read and attested to by future generations. M uh, Madam Speaker, I want to compare Senator Kabaka to a famous uh, statesman in old Rome called Marcus Caesar. He was a man of letters, he was a lawyer, he was a statesman, he was an orator. Uh, the only thing, and a man of letters, as I've said, the only difference between him and Senator Kabaka was that because, uh, because he was a successful lawyer and a successful politician, the only difference is that uh, he tried to uh, overthrow the government in Rome, which Kabaka has never tried. But in every, in every respect, including, you know, calling for democratic rule, because Caesar also wanted the old Republican tradition uh, to be maintained in Rome before Julius uh, Caesar and after he became the emperor in old Rome. So I, I hope in the life of a great man like this, because uh, he always sat in front of me or I sat behind him or vice versa, but 
he was truly inspiring uh, as a, a man of letters and as a human being. I, I hope that uh, we will remember him for the good deeds he, he did for this country and for being firm and principled. Uh, whether we disagreed or agreed, he, he remained principled and that I'd always remember. Finally, I, Madam Speaker, I always encourage all the young senators that, you know, uh, create your brand. And Kabaka created his brand. And say everything that you must say. Even if people think you are wrong, say it. The only thing that we must always maintain is decorum. Because, you know, as politicians, sometimes we go overboard. Lawyers never go the way politicians go. The churches, the bishops don't call each other names like politicians do. And Kabaka never did. Senator Langat Andrew. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker, for also giving me this particular opportunity to mourn one of our great leaders, Senator Kabaka. I want to say that uh, dead is a monster that spares no one irrespective of wisdom or knowledge. I want to say Senator Kabaka was a great man. I've heard so many of us talk about him as a great debater. He was a great debater here, and I want to say that if anyone ever sat with Kabaka outside this particular house in a free environment and listened to him, he was a man of great knowledge. He had an aspiration to become the next governor of Machakos. He had a plan for that particular uh, uh, vision. I remember one time I asked him if he was an economist. Because his arguments on the area of economics expressed a lot of wisdom and brilliance. As Senator Jerujota said, I want to express a lot of concern in the area of media council. What sometimes the social media and the media, even the mainstream media, talks about people, uh, especially on their dead, is very disrespectful to the families. They forget about ethics that they learned in university, about being mindful of even the significant other people was around us. Sometimes what these people say are more injurious to the living than even. Senator Kilonzo Mutula, Junior. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I hope I can do this in three minutes. It's very difficult to eulogize Senator Kabaka. When uh, I didn't see him here for three weeks, after the Naivasha retreat on BBI, I called him personally. He told me he was unwell. He explained that he had several symptoms which I advised him to go and get checked. And it turned out that he actually had COVID and a, and a tumor. Madam Speaker, I checked on him every day uh, after that. Senator Kabaka was the sort of person, even when he was unwell, he was still having coffee here and there, full of life. So it was very disturbing to receive a call on 4th of December that he was unwell. I'm still very traumatized because I had to do a lot of organization through the parliament to get Senator Kabaka checked because I was told about his diagnosis of excessive bleeding at 6 a.m. on that day. Although I wanted to disclose to all you members what had befallen Kabaka, I, was, I really restrained myself. As a result, I really suffered with that information and therefore just to find him immobile at um, the hospital was more traumatizing. I met Kabaka in 2009 in Kaba, where I went to pick my lovely wife Anita, where he comes from, and I've known him and he used to call me his in-law yeah, in, uh, in Kikamba Adoni. Uh, to, to find to, for Kabaka and his largeness of life to be reduced into a coffin tomorrow is something that will be very traumatizing to me. That great man and great humor, we used to sit behind us here, 
It's a, it's a tragedy. I want to remind you members that in the end, as politicians, we're all human beings. Let's be friends. Let's know one another. And may his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Um, I really have a problem with time. So I would ask that uh, if one can use about two minutes instead of three, it would be easier. I don't know how you'll use the two minutes. Senator Amos Wako, kindly. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about a learned colleague. Senator Kabaka was a first term, was having his first term as senator. And as usual, when those having second term receive those who are now coming in for the first time, they, we observe them. And Senator Kabaka quickly made his mark upon me as somebody who was giving his all, literally his all, uh, to serve the people who elected him. And that came out clearly when you talked with him. It came out clearly when he made contributions in this house that he was very much concerned with uh, the, Senator Amoswako, there is a point of, of order sorry. by Senator Mutula Kilonzo. Madam Speaker, this is a special sitting. We are supposed to sit until midnight, and we are very few of us left. And all these senators here will not find an opportunity to say something tomorrow. Um, and although the standing orders require that I request for an extension of time, since a special sitting, I'm not sure whether that standing order applies. But even if it doesn't apply, Madam Speaker, would, it be, would you be kind enough to allow at least the people in this chamber to say something? Even if you give them two minutes, we will not extend beyond even to seven o'clock because they will not get that opportunity tomorrow. Thank you. Um, it looks like you read my mind. I was actually getting a copy of the standing orders to see, uh, to quote the relevant section to be able to extend time to allow those that are here to be able to, to talk about our colleague. Being a special sitting and a sitting that involves the death of one of our of our members, I think we can do for those that are here. So I will be able to extend time, maybe by another 10 or so minutes for us to be able to conclude. So, so the, the, those that are here uh, will be able to be accommodated. Please proceed, Senator Amoswako. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I had not known Senator Kabaka before. He was not in my party. But when he came here, he impacted upon me very seriously as, an, as a member of the legal profession. In fact, he's the one who took the initiative to come and consult me from time to time on issues legal. And through that, I came to know him fairly well. But I would not have known him even better until we had the debate on the formula. Because here was somebody who, whose county was getting quite a bit of money, and yet he, he was ready to say no. His own governor attacked him from time to time in the press. And on the day of the debate, of the decision on that matter, ideally, tried to observe him, how he was, was going to react. And it may be recalled that on that day itself, even uh, the leader of minority really defended Senator Kabaka against the attacks by the governor and so on, very, very, very strongly. And uh, in my mind, I thought he may just change his mind and now vote for the formula because the county was benefiting. But he was sitting there. And he walked very resolutely, very focused, and said a big no to the formula. Although he was concerned with the welfare of his people, the issues of uh, rule of law, social justice, and so on, were above that. And he acted in accordance. 
Uh, yes, your time is up. So, um, but uh, all one minute for yeah, you to put on record. I just want to put on record my condolences on my own behalf and on the and, and on behalf of the people of the county of Busia at the passing away of Senator Kabaka. May the Almighty God give him strength, give the family strength and comfort during this period of sorrow and grief. Uh, Deputy, Deputy Speaker, Senator Margaret Kamar. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me the opportunity to join my colleagues in registering on behalf of the people of Wasingishu County our deepest condolences to the family of Senator Boniface Mutinde Kabaka, a man who distinguished himself as a great debater, as a very seasoned lawyer. He gave a lot of advice on the legal part of issues, including at the committee when, the, when he was in the, his committee. Madam Speaker, we shall miss him, but we believe that God has really had a better plan for him. Madam Speaker, uh, Senator Kabaka died at the time when I had told him that I was going for payback in Machakos because my own auntie was married in 1965 and we were going there for two beautiful brides from Machakos. And when I was looking for him, I actually looked for Mutula because I couldn't trace him and he was not picking, but uh, I was glad that uh, I, I was Glad we got the brides, but very, very sad because one of the times we went there is when he was in hospital. I really, uh, I know we'll miss uh, uh, Senator Kabaka, but when the day he died at two in the morn at eight in the morning, we also lost John Yaka at 1.30, and I, my deepest condolences to the family of John Yaka, who was also a member of this uh, house and also a member of the cabinet. We also have the governor of Nyamira, who is in the same mortuary currently. We also send our deepest condolences through our senator of Nyamira, uh, Senator Mogeni. It is a very difficult time. And particularly when we know you can have only one minute, Madam Speaker, only one minute. Yeah, just uh, one minute to say that uh, the death of this uh, very dear brothers of ours uh, is just part of the losses that we have made because of COVID. And we really must start thinking about this. And I would like to join those who have been urging government, especially the county governments, to look at how we treat our doctors. Because we really need to think of how to assist our doctors so that they can assist our people. Madam Speaker, I, I, I thank you for the opportunity. Senator Masitsa Naomi Shionga. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this time to enjoy you and sending my tribute to Senator Kabaka Bonface Mutinda. Madam Speaker, I would like to start by saying that the hour of deaths, or the hour of deaths cannot be forecast. And we can only imagine that it will be a distance in future. For our colleague Kabaka, it came very soon. Madam Speaker, I had time to go and visit him to the hospital that material day he passed, only to be told that he's no more. You can imagine how I felt going to visit somebody and you are told he's heading to the mock. With all the true respect, Madam Speaker, it's my honor to speak about him today. Although I wish I were talking about his retirement party and celebrating what great man he was, instead I'm talking or eulogizing Senator Kabaka. Madam Speaker, he, Madam, uh, Senator Kabaka was a honorable member. He was an articulate leader who brought or who brought courage with to everything he did. He had fine political mind, and indeed he was. We can all think that we are living, and I want to tell my people that 
life is so unfair that it came soon for our colleague Kabaka. It has taken him soon from the family and we shall never see Kabaka again. Madam Speaker, please allow me one minute because I just want to finish my creepy. One minute, please. Yes. Madam Speaker, it was very hard for me to hold when I was in the hospital that I was headed to the mock. I want to say that death is a reminder to all of us that how life is very short for us. Please treasure every moment you live. Rest in peace, my colleague Kabaka, until we meet again. Bye-bye. God bless you and bless your journey. Thank you. Senator Haji Farhia Ali. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity uh, to send my heartfelt condolences to the family of Senator Kabaka. Uh, I also wish to send my condolences to my own backyard. Uh, a chief from my area was butchered today by Al-Shabaab, and he was actually beheaded. So that shows that this uh, Al-Shabaab element can attack anybody anytime. And, uh, and it doesn't matter whether whichever religion, it's just at their own convenience. So I wish to send my condolences. Madam Speaker, coming back to Senator Kabaka, Senator Kabaka was very much passionate about the people of Machakos, Madam Speaker. He, 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 he had a great vision for the county of Machakos, where he hoped to be the, 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 the governor. Madam Speaker, I am sad that he never realized his vision. Madam Speaker, uh, 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 Senator Kabaka was a man of his own words. If he said one word, it is, that is what you get, Madam Speaker. So he was very reliable as a, com uh, as a colleague. He was there for you when you needed him more. I remember we visited uh, uh, Senator Faki when he lost his son. Uh, uh, and we visited his home with him, uh, and he, he, he was empathetic to, to, to uh, colleagues. Madam Speaker, uh, in the, in the la before the committees were changed, I shared two committees with Senator Kabaka, so we, we, I got fond of him. I have never attended a burial ceremony. This will be my first time because of how dear Senator Kabaka was to all of us. Uh, Madam Speaker, I remember when Senator uh, Wambua brought a, 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 a you know, pending bill motion on his behalf of his county. Please conclude in one minute. Uh, Senator Kabaka supported Senator Wambua passionately in defending the, uh, the, the people who never got their, 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 their bill. He, he was also lively. You know, sometimes he was so lively that I can't imagine now we have already lost him. In my head, that is something that I have not conceptualized up to now. And Madam Speaker, uh, I mean, I think life is, it was said before, life is too short. Let us appreciate each other when we are alive and all of us can, you know, appreciate ourselves. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me that extra second. Senator Sylvia Kasanga on Zoom. is gone. He, he was a personal friend uh, beyond even being a colleague. I have had the honor of, of attending several functions alongside him. We've lost you. We've lost your voice. We can only see your face. Can you hear us? I'm trying. I, yes, I can hear you. Okay, Somebody had back. muted me. You're back now. Please proceed. Yes, so Thank you, Madam Speaker. I had the opportunity to attend several functions with Senator Kabaka. In Machakos, we raised funds at a church where the speaker was presiding. Then he went and hosted us a wonderful lunch in Machakos town. Then he came to my church in Daystar, our Catholic church, and he helped us to raise funds and we spent an entire day with him. And then Madam Speaker, Senator Kabaka was a lover of trees. We actually have a forest here, which he came to plant with us 
of over a thousand trees. We call it uh, the forest of Senator Kabaka here in Kenya. That is how much he loves trees and he planted lots of trees in Ukambani. Madam Speaker, I, I have to say I have lost a, a personal friend, somebody who shared information freely, somebody who gave advice as and when it was required. He was always gripping me to make sure that I am working hard in my business and making sure my business does not you know, get overshadowed by Senate affairs. He was really a good man. He was hardworking in his practice. He was self-made, you know, the sort of leader that young people need to emulate. Young people need to understand that you can actually find your way into the highest house of this house by sheer hard work, commitment, and honor in everything that you do. He was really a good example to the young people, Madam Speaker. He was also very steadfast, and like most of my colleagues have said, he was a man of his word. What he said, he meant it, and he stood by it. I really feel the loss of, of, of Senator Kabaka. I will personally miss him, and I really feel it for the citizens of Machakos because he had a vision for Machakos. He really, really had a vision for Machakos. Madam Speaker, I pray that his soul may rest in eternal peace and that his family may be comforted by the love of God and that, the, you know, the man Order that Senator he was will always you. remain and will be. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. Your time is up. Thank you. Um, Senator Maura Isaac. Thank you, uh, Mr. S Madam Speaker. I really want to mourn my friend, someone who I knew uh, many years when we were in the same party in ODM. We stood out, the two of us, because he was Kamba, I was Kikuyu, and we used to console each other that we may be in the wrong party because of ethnicity, but uh, we nevertheless, because of our ideology, le center-left ideology, we stood together, shoulder to shoulder, and it's quite interesting that in the 12th parliament we made it to the Senate. He is a friend who we shared a lot in terms of the books that we read and the good command of English, really, uh, since the times that we, uh, we were inducted together as senators, all of us in Naivasha. And further, uh, actually, his benevolence and um, great, you know, humanity was displayed when uh, the first sen uh, the senator from Migori died, Ben Olwoch, and he volunteered, only him, in that big funeral to educate his children. And that really says a lot. Senator Kabaka is really well read. I think he has about four master's degrees, actually. Uh, so he's, he's not just somebody who reads books. He has a lot of it. And I think he was engaged, enrolling into another one, over and above the Pasuiga PhD degree. Uh, Senator Kabaka was the only man who stood with me uh, by signing my papers when I was competing to be the deputy speaker of this house. And for that, I will forever remain grateful. Uh, he's a man that really believed in my course. We served with him in the Committee of Finance and Budget, Madam Speaker. And also, uh, we traveled together. I remember we were with him last year, November, in Cape Town, uh, enjoying the, uh, the, the, the various you know, aspects of that place, including Robin Island. And he's really a great man. In fact, he frogmarked me this year uh, when we were defending the Senate at Naivasha in the retreat. That was his commitment. He just took me from the chair and said, let's go and fight for it. So, Madam Speaker, I mourn a friend, a great patriot, a man who really was ahead of his time, and I believed who would have been the future governor of Machakos. May you rest in peace, Senator Boniface Kabak. Senator Mbogo George Ochilo Ayako. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to condole with the family of Senator Kabaka, the people of Machakos. I do so on my own behalf and on the behalf of my family and the people of Migori. We, the people of Migori, had also the misfortune of losing my predecessor and the sadness that engulfs Machakos, we had occasion to experience it. In such sad times, we recourse to God we recourse to one another, and we share this and all the grief. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. I just want to say two things about Senator Kabaka. Senator Kabaka was a pompous person with very colorful language. And those who do not understand pomp and colorfulness would mistake it for arrogance. If you went beneath the veneer of Senator Kabaka, he was a humble and loving person. And among the senators who are here, in my view, is he, if history is written, you will find that he will occupy uh, one of the front chapters. Most of us will occupy the footnotes of that history. 
because he earned it. He is a person who stood and fought for justice and particularly social justice. I want to conclude, Madam Speaker, that I'm happy that Senator Kabaka is not being cremated. There is a trend of people getting cremated and I almost got uh, caught into that trend. And Madam Speaker, uh, there is this book in the Bible that talks about Lazarus and when the Lord went to uh, look for him, he found the body of Lazarus and raised it. If Lazarus had been cremated, there would be nobody to raise. So I'm happy that uh, when the time of Kabaka comes to rise, his body will be there to be raised. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator Mogeni Eric Okong. Uh, Madam Speaker, on my own behalf, on behalf of my family and the people of Nyamira, I also want to take this opportunity to pass my condolences to the family of the late uh, Senator Kabaka. Uh, Madam Speaker, Senator Kabaka is a, a very special friend to me. Other than Senator Cherage, Senator Mutula, and Senator Naomi Wako, he's one of those few senators who have, who have been privileged to host in my home in, in Nyamira. He has shared a meal with my mom. And what stands out uh, uh, from the other three is that he even uh, conducted an arambe for my church uh, called Motagara SDA. I and Mr. Senator Kabaka uh, were privileged to work for the same law firm, Kingori Karioke and Company Advocates, and it's the staff in that law firm that interested me to know Kabaka. They described him as a very happy and jovial person. In this house, we cannot compete for anybody who, who is as friendly or as jovial as, Mr. Ka as uh, Senator Kabaka. We cannot find a man who was as bold, brave, and courageous as Senator Kabaka. We have lost a great friend. We have lost a man who had a lot to contribute to the uh, growth of this house as a Senate, and the people of Machakos are the poor. He was not the richest man in this house, but he was the most generous. He was free to give to a, a, a social cause, church arambes when people had died. And I hope, Madam Speaker, that the people of Machakos will consider rewarding a member of the family, may it be a son or a daughter, with that senatorial seat of Machakos. May God bless his soul in eternal peace. Senator Inima Gertrude Musuruve. Uh, thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to condole my colleague. And uh, on behalf of uh, myself, uh, persons with disabilities in this republic, and my family, uh, I want to say uh, pole sana to the family of uh, Senator uh, Kabaka. Indeed, as uh, colleagues have said, uh, Senator Kabaka was a friend of everyone. He was a team player and he was really empathetic. He would empathize with all colleagues and uh, anytime he spoke to someone, he had something to tell someone. I remember at one point last year when I went to South Africa, I took a team of uh, Kenyan players there. When I told uh, Senator Kabaka that I was going to South Africa, he gave me contacts of his sisters and his sister and he linked us up and we were able to interact and the sister confirmed that uh, Senator Kabaka was able to educate all his siblings so Senator Kabaka had a very big heart and he did what God intended him to do and this is a lesson to us that when God gives us a role in uh, in this world as we are living we should endeavor to do our God given role because at the end of the day we have to go back to himself and I want to say that death is painful but uh, even at this time uh, we have to really thank God for the opportunity he gave us to be with Senator uh, Kabaka. And it's also a lesson to us that uh, we should endeavor to live a legacy so that we can be remembered for the good deeds that we have done, uh, you know, uh, as God allows us to do. I want to say, uh, Paul Sana to the family of uh, Senator uh, Kabaka. And I hope that God will also favor us to ensure that his legacy in leadership in family comes back to the Senate and Parliament. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order Senators, I pass again my condolences to the family of uh, the late Kabaka. And we have said enough, no, not, not enough, we have said much, but not enough to describe him. May he rest in peace. Honorable Senators, having concluded the business of the day, it is now time to adjourn the House. 
The Senate therefore stands adjourned until Tuesday 9th, February 2020 at 2.30 p.m. I also uh, say that uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to the Senators.